Todd and George Rogers lead the way offensively for a team that's never made the playoffs, but this could be the year. The Saints are tied for the lead in sacks in the NFL. Bruce Clark and Ricky Jackson hope to make it a long day for Joe Montana. 49ers and Saints on CBS. CBS Sports presents... The National Football League. Today, the New Orleans Saints against the San Francisco 49ers. Good afternoon, everyone, and this is a very early season important game in the Western Division. You can see why in just a moment. The Saints have already lost to Atlanta. They are 1-1. One one. Of course, the 49ers are 2-0, and, oh, and they go out of the division next week, so this one is a crucial early game in this ballpark. It's called the Stick, Candlestick Park, and if you think baseball players hate to come here, think about football teams. The 49ers have won seven in a row, dating back to last year in this ballpark. I'm Tom Brookshire, along with Wayne Walker. And Wayne, I've seen some good offenses in my time, but none better than San Francisco right now. They're often failing. Uh, a great statistic about them, Tom, and we don't believe in those a lot of times. But in their first two games, the opener against Detroit, last week against Washington, 22 possessions. They've scored on 13 of them. That's almost yeah. unheard of. What about Richard Todd now? He does have a good strong arm, which gives him a longer arm. But what's happened to their offense the first two weeks? Well, St. Louis, is, or rather, New Orleans has started out a little bit slow. And it is really because of Richard Todd. He's brand new there. He's familiarizing himself with his receiver and you can only do that under game conditions but he's been successful in the past against the 49ers 1980 42 completions last year when he's with the Jets he beat him here at Candlestick so will all that work will none of it work we'll find out here's Brookie there's young Martin Anderson the Dane kicking off for Bum Phillips which means that San Francisco did win that toss here's the kickoff that's Monroe Monroe oh is hit very hard short of the 20-yard line Let's set those lineups for San Francisco. Joe Montana, who else? Wendell Tyler, Roger Craig, a great tandem. Dwight Clark, Freddie Solomon, same. They're two great outside receivers and very smart. Russ Francis having a great year at tight end. Bubba Paris, Ayers, Quillen, Cross, and Fawnhorse, among the very best in football. Good offensive line and getting better. We'll set that defense that Montana will face for New Orleans in just a moment. Top-rated quarterback of all time. Play action on first play. Oh, and he's hit by number 57 very quickly, and the sack goes to Ricky Jackson. Exactly what the 49ers were worried about, the quickness and the blitzing of the New Orleans Saints. Ricky Jackson, the left outside linebacker, 57, comes in, beats the block by Roger Craig, with it, just with his quickness to the outside. Good coverage downfield, and Montana is down. They have to put a tight end on that side and make Ricky stay home at that position outside, eh? Yeah, and they've got a lot of them. They're as quick as he is, so they are tough to pick up when they start stunting and blitzing, and the 49ers feared that. They got seven sacks a week ago in that ball game when they beat Tampa Bay. Boy, Ricky Jackson is some kind of a nasty. Wish that that he came again. This time they ran inside. Wendell Tyler dancing for maybe a couple of three yards. Bruce Clark had a big day against Tampa Bay also at left end, the great Penn State All-American. Derlin Moore is now healthy at the nose position, and Jimmy Wilkes is very good at that sort of weak side right end defense. Ricky Jackson, Kovac, very underrated. Dirt Winston, tough against the run, and Whitney Paul, a very good athlete at the outside. Waymer, Poe, Gary, Watlett, about as hard-hitting a young secondary as there is in football. Solomon, Mike Wilson, three outside receivers now, and Clark. Overthrowing badly at the 30-yard line. Trying for number 88, Freddie Solomon, but Joe sort of loaded up a live round and overthrew everybody by about 10 yards. I think he almost had to there. Great coverage by, by Wadlett, and it looked like Poe in the middle, and if Montana would have brought that ball down, there was a chance it would have been intercepted. Here's the new San Francisco punter, the former Eagle, who was about second in the NFC last year, Maxie Runniger. This is a low punt that can be run back by Jeter Fields at the 48. Fields down to the 41, and it looks like the Saints have strapped it on and come to play a football game. The offense for the Saints, Richard Todd, the former Jet, he has the big arm. George Rogers, he's just one of the great players. Hokey Gaijad, Lindsey Scott, and Goodlow, and look out for number 88. He's a very good receiver. Hobie Brenner, the tight end. Ward is in there now at left tackle. Adelman at left guard. Court, the young center. And Kelvin Clark has moved from left tackle to right guard. And Stan Brock, the all-pro, is at right tackle. It's a good club. 
First and 10 in San Francisco territory for Todd. Four step drop. Knocked away beautifully. Number 50 came across the back. Ricky Ellison and made a good defensive play. Here's the defense for the 49ers, and it's been hurt a little bit. Pillars, Mano, Tuya Sosopo got through that one in good shape. Dwayne Board, they've been worked hard, and they are perhaps undersized, but they play well. Buns, Ellison, Jack Reynolds, and the new father of last night, Keena Turner. He had a baby last night, his wife did. And I'll set that great secondary in just a moment. To the 35-yard line, George Rogers in a bolt. Make no mistake, Bum Phillips has a very talented squad here, and he's only been there for three seasons before this. Here's that secondary for the 49ers. Mario Clark still going at left corner, but right is and can probably play today. Ronnie Lott is at right corner, and he can play anywhere. Williamson and Hicks, the two safety men are in their normal position. All right, third down and call it a long three. Single back is Gaijan. He's checking out. It to go at the 30-yard line on a very quick release by the former Jet quarterback. Had something right away, no doubt about that one. He took a snap, looked at Jeff Groth, and popped him, knowing that he'd be open. So they saw something in the films. I really think it's important for New Orleans to get off to a good start in this ball game. And the 49ers have kind of had their number the past couple years, and if they get off to a good start and get it going, they'll get cranked up. If, if the other thing happens where the 49ers get out on top early, it uh, could really take the wind out of New Orleans' sails. San Francisco lost a day because of Monday night. They only were in pads one practice for Bill Walsh this week. We'll see if they can shake it and get started. First down. Todd on the dash out to the left. He's got extra time. Look out. Intercepted at the two-yard line by Dwight Hicks. Hicks got the 25. Fumbles the ball and recovers his own fumble at the 30-yard line. Toby Brenner, the tight end, made Hicks fumble, but the INT counts. Well, it looked so good for New Orleans for a while here. Great draw back and then a dash out to the left, and he's got all day to look out here now. He goes down the middle, Dwight Hicks playing Free safety, perfect center field. Ball was just up there too long in, in that area of the field. Boy, Hicks looked like he might have laid off a little bit he too did. and waited for the throw, huh? Sure, he baited him. He was back there in perfect position, and he was as deep as the deepest receiver, and that's what you have to be when you're the free safety back there and kind of play like center field. A 28-yard interception run back by Dwight Hicks. Can you imagine the Philadelphia Eagles cut Hicks? on the last day of the season three seasons ago impossible the first opponent's turnover and a big one because it kept the saints from getting on that scoreboard first hard to believe when they're two and oh possible montana quickly throwing outside this is craig don't call him a fullback he's too fast for that he's to the 43 yard line very quickly johnny poe made the tackle there the guy the guy that never caught a pass in the in college at Nebraska. He was a uh, tailback for a while. Then they moved him up to fullback to block for Jarvis Redwine and, and people <laughs> like that. Bruce Clark right here, who had such a big game last week for the Saints. Double team. Keith Bonhorst getting help from Earl Cooper, the tight end. We're going to have to see a lot of that today, I bet. Bonhorst and Clark. That'll be some kind of a matchup the entire day. Bonhorst just came off early on Bruce. Trying to get an early lick in, didn't That's he? That's not too bad either. Unless you're detected. Von Horst right there is probably the 49ers best offensive lineman. He's, all star, he's had all pro years the last offense. couple of years, but Horst without down. the recognition that goes along with it. Well, we're going to take care of that this season. I thought he did a great job on several good people already this this season. He retired the Redskins defense he left in almost the other night. He had three games last year where the guy he was playing against didn't even get in on a tackle, a shutout. And no sacks so far this year. Cooper's the motion man, inside handoff. Roger Clegg gallops to just short of midfield, and I mean gallop. He had his knees right up under his chin. Over that right side again, Fawn Horse, the right tackle, Randy Cross, the right guard. Kind of an influence, and, and Clark took a step out, and Craig made a good cut up inside. Fred Quillen had a job on Derlin Moore, the nose tackle. And it was a good-looking play for San Francisco. Earl Cooper made a pretty good block on that linebacker to straighten him. That's a tough block. A 12-yard gain by Roger Craig. I'll tell you, that's a good tandem in there. Craig and Wendell Tyler. 
the eye. Tyler. Tyler spinning. Look out. That's what he's the best. Tyler spins to the 35-yard line. He might fumble a few, but he makes some runs that nobody else makes. You can't quit if you're on defense against him. He turned, he turned a two-yard loss into a big game. Ricky Jackson's blitzing down. Now watch him blitz down from the left of your screen. He cuts inside the lead block. He's back there. He has Tyler wrapped up, and he spins away from him. A good spin move into the secondary, and he picks up the yardage. Well, Harris made some block at left guard, too. He took that, took Kovacs and turned him all the way around, didn't he? And I thought Ricky Jackson made a heck of a play at outside linebacker and came up empty. There's the bum. The heck's getting larger each year because his team is better. Eight and eight last year, and they're talking playoff. First quarter action. This is playing. Tyler in trying to get to the 30 and stacked up there. Remember, the Saints were the number one defensive team in the NFC and second overall in the entire NFL. They're fast and they're very large. And the 49ers, uh, Wayne Walker, seem to talk a lot about speed. And they said this team defensively has really good foot speed, doesn't they? Great quickness, and that's why their blitzing is so effective. Now, they've, they've blitzed a lot against everyone. Last year against the 49ers, they didn't blitz that much. San Francisco, I thought they'd see a lot, and so far they have. Second down. <laughs> Call it six. Five if you're a 49ers fan. Montana's got a lot of time. Solomon, Solomon, touchdown. Freddie Solomon coming in from the post position carries Russell Gary right into the end zone. What a throw by Montana. Solomon lined up wide outside, came down the line in motion, kind of faked the block at the tight end and then cut it up the middle. He was in like a seam of his own all the time. The free safety came over, took a shot at him and missed him. And he fell in the end zone. See right there, he was in so close to the line of scrimmage, he kind of got lost in there. Montana spotted him between people. And Russell Gary couldn't keep him out of the end zone. A 32-yard touchdown pass right in the seam and a beautiful throw and catch. Wersey's extra point is perfect as he has been all year so far. Tom Dooley's making the signal, but it's Montana and Solomon that cash in. It's 7 0 San Francisco. I tell you, you look at Solomon sometimes, I think he kind of lulls the defensive backs a little. He looks like a high school guard. He's real chunky below the waist, got real thick legs, and he doesn't feel like he'd be very fast, and he's just about the quickest player that the 49ers have. I think he jives a little guys in practice, too. I think he acts like he's not going to be very fast until game time. Where's his kickoff? This is Jeter Fields is waiting down there, and Kenny Duckett. Boy, this is a deep kick. Ray gets it two yards deep in the end zone, and it's Jeter Fields coming up with it. Now he's hemmed in just out over the 16-yard line and piled up with red. A typical San Francisco start, though. They hold off, get an interception, and keep the Saints off the board, and then come quickly down the field and strike on their first series. And I mentioned that uh, it was very important for New Orleans to get off to a good start. So even though we are early in this ball game, this is a, a fairly crucial offensive series for the Saints. They've either got to pick up, at least pick up some first downs to keep the 49ers away from good field position when they have to punt if they don't score. Inside drive to George Rogers, who has really hit. How he held on to the ball, I don't know. Running straight up, and Jack Reynolds really straightened up the 218-pound tailback. One of the great runners that's come in his league in a long time, but somehow he managed to hold on to the ball. Yeah, you're talking about finishing off a run. He was the one that finished off that one. Dwight Hicks came up late to try to get him, and Rogers played a pretty good shot at him. Richard Todd, the new arm for New Orleans. First down and 10. For you people that have watched Minnesota, shock Atlanta 27 to 20. And of course, neither of the teams that you're going to be watching here at Candlestick Park will, will mind that a bit. It's San Francisco, 7 to nothing over New Orleans. First time the 49ers had the ball, a 32-yard touchdown pass. Joe Montana to Freddie Solomon. Right now, the Saints have the ball, and a penalty was called against that tough 49er defense. And you are with Marshall us Powell. at Candlestick Park. Tom Brookshire and Wayne Walker. There's a penalty right here. It was on the right cornerback, Ronnie Lott. Number 80 is Lindsey Scott. Watch Lott's right elbow. He tries to take a shot at him right here. The ball was already gone, right? That almost might get you out of the ball game. 
course, Ronnie Lott has moved from left corner to right corner. And if anything, he's become more aggressive. <laughs> and that's hard to imagine. First and ten. The Saints had a good drive that was stifled by an interception. Now the blitzing side came from the left, and George Rogers maybe made two yards as Carlton Williamson came up to the secondary and went in behind the play. Not quite sure whether he blitzed that time or whether he just crept up and read the block of the tight end and knifed down and, and made the play, but he was there immediately. Richard Todd has had big numbers before against San Francisco. In fact, he had the most completions in the record book in the NFL, 42, but that was in 1980, wasn't it? Second down and call it nine. Todd, screen pass out to guys down in the flat. Hope he gets to the 44. Good defensive play by Williamson. And now the nickel people come in. You know the trouble that they gave Washington for at least a half or three quarters. And they gave Detroit a real good game, too, even though they're not physically overpowering on the line of scrimmage. And I think it's their best defense. Four down linemen, two linebackers with great quickness, and then five defensive backs. Freddie Dean, of course, the master, is not in a San Francisco uniform. Here it is on third down and nine. Todd, he drops. He's being hit, throws a bad interception as Ronnie Locke comes back to the 45-yard line of New Orleans. Put a big pass rush on Todd and forced the INT. I say it's a, a, a second interception by Richard, and it's another, you know, fairly shaky throw. This is another one where perhaps he didn't have anything going over there. If you look right there, he's going for number 88, Eugene Goodlow. He did get hit just as he threw, but in that situation, uh, I think that was a little bit more than a hope. And Chris Ward, the former Jet, playing left tackle, and that time Ward just beat him. It's 7-0 San Francisco. And on the ground. Here's Montana going to Solomon at the 20, 30-yard line, and Solomon falls to the 27-yard line. Russell Gary hanging on there, and Montana looks razor sharp. Now, he does have a flat jacket on, but does he wear that all the time, Wayne Walker? Well, he does. He took a shot in the ribs against Washington and had a flax jacket on for protection. Watch this throw. Everything is on the money with him so far this season. And three games, no interceptions. He didn't have any interceptions during the playoffs last year and, and in the first uh, two games this season. We watched him in practice the other day, and every ball he threw in practice was right on the money. He's just in a groove right now. And Gary said that nobody they play has the vision that Joe Montana does, that he can look around and know who's open. Play action pass. Montana going for it all. One for Clark and overthrow it at the goal line. Closely covered and well covered by Johnny Poe and company. In two weeks on CBS Sports Saturday, Gary Cooney takes on Philip Brown in a 10-round heavyweight bout live from Anchorage, Alaska. Cooney hasn't fought, of course, since losing his bid to take the heavyweight title from Larry Holmes in June of 82. Join us all for the action in two weeks. CBS Sports Saturday, Cooney against Brown. Hey, gentleman Jim Corbin has a more recent fight than Jerry Cooney has. That's right. <laughs> Keeps getting hurt in training. Well, that's the best time to get hurt, I guess, if you're going to have an injury. Second down and 10. Montana inside handoff. Craig. Good speed on this young running back who's not as big as a lot of fullbacks, but he's got great speed and he's he catches the ball well, too. Whitney Paul and Bruce Clark combining there. And this is a mammoth defensive ball club that the 49ers are facing. And it's still quick. Ronnie Lott's first interception of 1984 that just took place. The team's second for the year. All right, third down and seven. Solomon is to the bottom and Dwight Clark to the top of your screen. Montana overthrowing Craig at about the 10 yard line. That's the first time in the three days or two days we've been here that the, his ball has not been caught. Craig running an inside circle pattern on the outside linebacker Ricky Jackson that time and had a step from Montana overthrew him. Now, Wersing hasn't missed a field goal from the 40 in in 26 shots. 26 in a row from he inside won't look the 40. Up. He won't look up. Montana will hold. But he has a good stroke going right now. This will be a 42-yarder. It's blocked. 
Number 94 got a hand up very quickly, Jim Wilkes. And now the run back takes place. That's Russell Gary Look with out. the ball. Russell Gary has Montana to beat. Montana knocks him down at the 28-yard line. And Montana may be hurt. He's slow getting up, and Russell Gary, the little Nebraskan, took the blocked field goal attempt by Worsing that snapped that streak. In fact, it blows it to smithereens. What a play by Russell Gary. As you mentioned, it looked like it was Jim Wilkes, number 94, who got a hand on it. It deflected it just over the line. Russell Gary picked it up, made a move like he was going to start right, I think, and then took out to the left and had nothing but the wide open spaces. Got one block, and it was Montana that had to make the stopper down there. This will end up, look at this, he starts out here, makes a cutback, and he's in good shape, 59 yards on that return. Illegal block by Wilkes, it was Wilkes. He stayed on the line of scrimmage and just jumped. That's Rogers piling right in there inside the 25. A 59-yard run back of a blocked field goal attempt by Russell Gary, and the Saints are in business. May have been a little low anyway, Wayne. May have been a little low, and it looked like they had pretty good penetration. Look at 94 back there, so you see him appear that soon. So he did have a pretty good push. They're not allowed to take off from five yards and run anymore because of the human pyramid effect. What a great well, cutback right here that he made. He is some tough little guy, and he wasn't afraid to go out and face the 49ers. We talked to him yesterday. He looked, looked like he was looking forward to it. Rogers inside the 30. Don't let the big fella get going. Don't let him begin to sweat like a real good thoroughbred racehorse and say, hey, I'm going to have one of those 200-yard days. It's a long day for you on defense if you do that. Now, this is this. New Orleans got to come up with something on the scoreboard, this possession after that break, Tom. They got to get uh, get things picked up again on their side. That was a good play by the defense that gets the ball back, but the offense has got to do something with it now. Opening game of 1983, I watched Rodgers go 76 yards against St. Louis. He ran over two secondary people and then made a couple others miss him and then ran off and left them. He is He's quite a load. We talked to Carlton Williamson uh, yesterday at the 49ers practice and said the best way to play uh, against George Rogers is to keep him running sideways. <laughs> That's tough to do, though. Don't let him get turned up field. Huh? There's a saint on the field. We'll give you the the Edelman. Edelman, the big guard, is there. It looks like he's going to be up and around. And New Orleans has the football. They're going. And George Rogers already has 27 yards early in this first period. Third down and two. Uh-oh. Looks like the flanker on the outside move. Rogers breaks off inside of 10. Rogers is going to score, and the flags are down. They're going to call it back. John Tice moved early. Oh, they had it going over there. Two tight ends on the same side. One of them jumped. The second most penalized team is Bum Phillips' team in the NFC. And boy, when you have a touchdown run by a, one of your stars, it hurts. Two offense, third down. Was on John Tice, the tight end. He had double tight end alignment on the same side of the field. Obi Brenner was the regular tight end. Tice was like a wing back set outside of him. He jumped. That's one of those formations where they just tell you where they're coming. George is going to run over here behind us, and you try to stop him. They didn't get him stopped. They stopped themselves. And he's not happy, Bum Phillips. Bum Phillips is not at all. You sometimes cannot tell elation from dejection, but he is not happy with this. Now it's third down and long. Third and eight. Hot. Silver almost. Gross had the ball and then let it go on through. No flags are down, and Dwight Hicks really had him covered. Let's go to New York City for an update. Brent Musburger. Brent? Rookie, the New York Giants have evened up the count against the Washington Redskins. I don't know where the Giants are getting these new wide receivers from. Here's one out of Annapolis, five years in the Navy. Phil Matanke, that set up the buck for the touchdown, and now it is 7-7. Okay, Brent. Phil Sims has gone out of his mind with the Giants. All tied up. Morton Anderson now with a 42-yard field goal attempt of his own, and it's off to the left. Pulled a little bit by the left footer. Obviously, a San Francisco crowd welcomes the event. Tough ball game. San Francisco 7, Saints 0. To the San Francisco 49ers since 79, Bill Walsh. Super Bowl a couple of years ago. 
Looks he might be heading back that way again. I can't disagree with that. First down, Montana, quickly waggling right. Solomon's open at the 40. Solomon knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Wantlett had to come over after Solomon made the other safety man miss. Perky, they went slot way over to the left, and they, Solomon was the only receiver over on this side of the field and left him one-on-one -on -one here with Dave Wehmer. Made an in-move, took it out with his quickness, and, and you see the space he had. He is the quickest player they have. You know, Todd made a good point when he talked to us uh, that he used to have to throw with the Jets just to drop and throw to a blind spot, whereas Montana's allowed to read. It looks like he, the receivers, everybody plays better when you read and throw. Handoff to Wendell Tyler. Bounced outside. There's a flag on the on the play. Good defensive play by Dennis Dirt Winston. Winston and Kovac, both of them over there. Good team defense by those two inside linebackers. It was it always looked to me like Montana could go quickly to one of two or three other receivers if Solomon had been covered. Most of the time on their patterns, they'll they'll cut the field in half for him, and uh, and he'll have. Decline. It's second down. I stopped to listen to the call, but he'll have his receivers lined up on one side of the field and his primary receiver and the secondary, usually on the same side of the field for him, so he doesn't have to scan the whole field. Okay, second down. Penalty refused by New Orleans. They would rather burn it down than force Montana further back with the penalty. Craig is the remaining back. It's really a double wing situation. Montana dumps it out to Craig. Craig into New Orleans territory to the 45, and Kovac made a shoestring tackle. Not too many people know that young man, uh, but he did have a sensational rookie year last year for the 49ers. 33, Roger Craig. He was a. We said he he played tailback some in Nebraska, enough to be the fourth time, the fourth leading rusher of all time in Nebraska, and they've had some good ones. And. Uh, he's got great hands, exceptional speed, and uh, he's a tough runner. You saw on that ball, it, he'll make the catch and just straight turn it upfield. He does not go sideways. That's true. Osborne doesn't ever throw the ball very much, does he? <laughs> but he does have good hands. Third down and three. The dash outside by Montana. Open and hit in the back is Wendell Tyler. Tyler at the 39. I believe Kovac is the one that stuck him. There it is right here now. Nothing to fool you right here. It wasn't even play action. Montana drops back straight and then dashes out. Tyler comes out, runs a turn underneath the linebackers. Kovach makes the hit. See Jackson over there to try to help out. Inside, but it's the first down. And inside the 40. Again, those offensive linemen for San Francisco know that Montana is going to stay in the particular area where he starts out, so they know how to block, and it gives them a good angle. Ocean Man is Russ Francis. Hawk back to the weak side. Goes Tyler outside. Tyler inside the 30. And running over Russell Gary to get there. And a great block by Roger Craig. We talked about his running ability just to play before. He was the lead back that time. Had the block on the cornerback, Dave Wehmer, number 44, and had him on the ground. On the field, number 74, Derlin Moore is slow getting up. The big Oklahoman. He's been playing with a bad wheel. And yes, he has. But he still starts every game, you know? I think well, he started darn near every game since he's been there. He's a tough one, I'll tell you that. He's one of the few guys that, uh, that will actually raise his hand and say, I like to play nose tackle. <laughs> I mean, that's like you like to be a catcher without equipment. And he was always really a, a four-man Line inside tackle till Bum Phillips took over at 81. Derlin's right. going to be helped off. That ankle's bothering. Don't forget, next week, the doubleheader on CBS. The NFL Today starts it all with the group back in New York. Then it's the 49ers against the Eagles back at Best Stadium or St. Louis and these New Orleans Saints in, down in New Orleans. Are there Washington Redskins against New England up in New England? So check your local listings. That second game is Chicago-Seattle or Green Bay against Dallas. So check your local listings will you for those doubleheader games we've got a good one here and make no mistake that bill walsh did not want to go into the second half in a close match with this team he's hit a too many stars on the Saints team to go in there and take them lightly and they got a rookie nose tackle in and out for Dylan moore don thorpe number 96. first and ten seven first downs for san francisco tyler almost leaned on his dance but didn't get the call interference call 
They're going to call Watlett. Pretty good play on the ball by the safety man. John Frank was trying to catch it. Well, I think you and I will like it because we played on defense. I mean, that looked like a pretty good defensive play. We'll just have to take a look at it. It's not supposed to be anybody's ball. It's supposed to be anybody's ball, when A team or B team. Watlett, the free safety. Right here now. Throw down the middle. Watch him close. He's going for the ball with both hands. Wow. Pretty tough call. Yes, sir. Another first down on the penalty. Craig is in there. And Monroe. That was Carl Monroe trying for that. And Montana did rush that one a bit. As the rush came from number 57, Ricky Jackson. Scores from elsewhere. The Giants and the Redskins 7 all. You saw that Sims touchdown. The Giants are hanging pretty tough. They're 2-0. and and the Redskins 0-2. Chicago 9-7, a final. It couldn't be snowing up in Green Bay this time. I was just going to say that that's the typical of that division, though. It's caveman division, I used to call it. Played in it for a few years. Forrest Gregg has changed their attitude. They're playing defense. Minnesota beating Atlanta. What a great upset for the Vikings. First win of the year. Second down and goal. Francis in motion. Toss back to the weak side. Wendell Tyler. Good defensive play on the right side. Number 26. I believe it was Jenner Fields that came up. I think Johnny Poe. Johnny Poe, I'm sorry. Yeah, you bet. He made a good play. Roger Craig came out again on the lead block, almost the same as they ran a couple plays ago to the other side. He got the initial block on Poe, but Poe battled him off and came back and made a tremendous defensive play. Three of these secondary people for the Saints are from the Big Eight. Nebraska, a couple of Nebraskans, and a Missourian, and then throw in a Notre Dameer, and you got a pretty darn good young secondary. And Bum Phillips has really changed this profile of this ball club. All right, third down and goal. Montana doesn't want to waste this drive. 23 seconds left in the first period. Clark takes the inside and gets his first sack. And very emphatically. Bruce Clark made the tackle. Bum Phillips said that Bruce Clark played the best game I've ever seen a defensive lineman play. And he just beat Keith Bonhorse there with a bull rush and a quick move to the outside. And I'll tell you this, New Orleans defense has been doing a pretty good job because they have not had good field position. And we're, as Wershing lines up, he might not get it off for the quarter end. Wershing does not get it off. That was pull left anyway. So Ray obviously would rather have another shot going the other direction. He was kicking that one from second base here at the infield at Candlestick Park. Let's see if they're going to stop it and move it down to the other end and give him another tee shot. That's a mulligan. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it sure is. You don't get many of those, do you? Let's see. The quarter ended before the kick. And Ray Wersey breathes for the first time. Into quarter one. Advantage San Francisco. New Orleans is coming on hot. For Montana, the holder at the 21, so it's a 31-yard attempt. He had missed the one left as the quarter ended. This one is dead solid, perfect, and it's long enough. It is. And the crowd stands up in the beautiful sunshine and says, nice going, Ray. So San Francisco, first seconds of the second period. It's 10 nothing. Where's each field goal good? Kick, it's another low kick. Watch number 97 leaping up there. Got a hand on it, deflected it. The ball still had enough carry to get across the crossbar. So a double sigh of relief for that man, Ray Worshing. And gathers, of course, the big rookie at 6-7, the defensive end. They're trying to block those, and they must have looked at those movies and Thought they could do it because they blocked the Wershey field goal already. Duckett's waiting for the Wershey field goal. Ray kicks it to the left. That's Duckett. Duckett running parallel with the 15-yard line. Gets out over the 20. And a 49ers collar in there. Ray looks like he might be worrying a little bit. He's shaking his head coming off. Kickers are a different breed anyway, but he's one of the most normal we've ever known. Look at the New Orleans defense shaking their head a little bit now. They've, they've played a, a real fine ball game so far. Now it's they're looking at that offense as they come off the field and say, come on, guys, do something for us here now. I tried to figure out how the Atlanta Falcons. In 
inside drive. Rogers from Todd. Not much there, maybe a yard. Keena Turner. By the way, Keena's a lovely lady at what nine o'clock last night had a daughter, Sheena. That's what so Keena name. had Sheena. Keena and his wife Therese. Some player. An eight and a quarter pound baby girl named Sheena. in this play. Inside drive, Rogers. Hit as soon as he took the ball by what that's Wayne Wilson, I'm sorry, with the ball. Wayne Wilson was hit immediately from the offside by Dwayne Board. Don't forget, next Saturday, college football on CBS. The number one rated Nebraska Cornhuskers will go against the number seven rated Bruins of UCLA. I think the, Bruins, the, Eastern the Bruins have been waiting for this one, I think. They played San Diego State and Long Beach State, and they haven't shown too much. They may be laying in the weeds for this one. Nebraska beat them 42 to 10 a year ago, so if revenge can be a motive, the U fans will be ready. Next Saturday on CBS, the stunning 49ers are handled. Todd now is going to run, being chased and tackled from behind by Dwayne Board. What a chase by the defensive end. Drop from behind by Flags are down. But nothing nullifies that kind of hustle by a 248-pounder. Sir, one more step, and Richard Todd had a first down picked up. How much does the 49er defense miss Freddie Dean on that particular call on the four-man front? A lot. A lot more than the New Orleans offense misses him. And it was a game here last year, the 27 to nothing game. Dean six. Disregard the flag. There is no foul. The quarterback was out of the pocket. Good job downfield by the 49er secondary. Todd with plenty of time originally here. Makes a pump fake. Looking down. Finds no one open. Bails out. Looks like he's got the room. Number 76 to Wayne Board, the guy they call Pee Wee. In an effort, grabbed an ankle and stopped it about a yard short of the first down. The flag was picked up and put back in the pocket. Tom Dooley is the head man out there. I like to see that once in a while when they're instantaneously dropped. If it's in an error, they can put them away. The players have to make the decisions that quickly. We even have to up here. Fourth down and short. Maybe about a yard. So Hanson is going to come in to putt. He's the young man from Sioux Falls. McLemore, who had that 55-yard return, return against Detroit. Now, this young man once kicked a 94-yarder. This is not, however, a 94-yarder. McLemore at the 32. McLemore picking up two blocks. McLemore now cutting back inside and drilled at the 34. He's a great little punt returner. He does bring them to their feet. Terry Hogue made the tackle there. And so... With 12.32 left before half, it's 10-0 San Francisco. Certainly not ever forgotten as far as I'm concerned. He's been a great player in this league. Sure is. He's watching the other Alabama, uh, Richard Todd, and should be needed. Uh, Sabre's ready to go. That's Wendell Tyler quickly to the 41-yard line. You know, Dick Vermeil, Wendell Tyler's old coach at UCLA, told me he was one of the few backs he ever saw that could make a cut in the hole and go somewhere else as he's going into a hole, the blocking sealed on. Quite a player. Gets that line of scrimmage pretty quickly, too. Other scores, the Rams on top of Pittsburgh, 7-0 in the first period. Rams have been rather disappointing up till now. Detroit, 7-0 over Tampa Bay. And Indianapolis trailing St. Louis and losing 34-33. Francis comes back in motion, and this ball is overthrown. A lot of heat that time on Montana. And the Saints defense is really battling, but how long can they keep it up? That was Whitney Paul, number 51 right there, the right outside linebacker who came in on the blitz. He's a great athlete. He can hide, he hides up 6'10 at Colorado. Yeah, he can run. Another one of those guys with great quickness. They can leave him in there in the nickel situation, and he can run with all the backs. Wendell Tyler coming out, and Derek Harmon is in now. But Carl Monroe is in now. Monroe, good coming out of the backfield. Of course, this is third down and four. Monroe coming across the middle now. There he is. Gets the ball. Oh, 
Doherty gets nailed. Great tackle at the 43-yard line. Bobby Johnson waited for him to come across and then settled the issue. Both of them are shaken up a little bit. There's Monroe in motion. You'll see him go right to left. The ball snapped. Then you'll see him go left to right, about eight yards deep in the secondary. Here he waits for Russ Francis to clear, and here he comes. Montana delivers, and Johnson, the nickelback, made a saver. He stopped the first down by first and ten by about a foot with a good hit. Great example of how Walsh and company clear out that area and bring that back through there, huh? Maxie Runniger back for his second punt for San Francisco, and Jenner Fields is waiting. This is a short kick. This is not going to make Bill Walsh very happy. He signed Runniger just this week. Well, the fans here aren't too happy about it, but Runniger should be used to those boos because he played six years in Philly. You're all wrong down. They boo you there warming up. <laughs> now, one thing that Walsh worries about, the kicking game. San Francisco leads 10-0. Todd never acted like he saw the linebackers. Buzz has got to go 235. of bootleg action they fake the sweep to the right and then Todd kept it on his hip rolled out towards you here ground level watch this fake the sweep right there rolls out here Buns is 57 must have, they must have thought Buns was going to come up and force the play he remember was Todd to loop it over him but just didn't have the touch on it and Todd calls his own offensive plays with some help from the sideline. Montana play action on the first down. Out to Lindell Tyler. Makes a linebacker miss at the 30 and gets to the 15-yard line. Waymer made the stop. Ricky Jackson missed him when he first made the catch. Now, how do you suppose, you know, the great backs have instinct, don't they? He's got to keep, he's watching that ball, concentrating on making the catch. He caught it. Ricky Jackson's bearing down on him about two feet from him when he makes the catch and he makes some kind of move that we'll never know what it is to avoid the tackle out there. Richard Todd, but he is out no, of jail. No. He is away from New York City. Believe me, does he love it deep south compared to playing in a jet uniform. However, he's had the interception, three of them so far. Montana back to work, going up for Dwight Clark. Good secondary coverage by New Orleans. And Montana gets up. that uh, Richard Todd calls his own plays and uh, but usually the first play of a series and the coaches send in so they know what to expect so that interception was the first play of a series I'm sure they did so of all of the offense in, in a quarter of a season Montana back on second down and ten Good throw. Clark catches it at the five and tries to get up. Johnny Poe touched him down. That might have been the only place they could complete that pass. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, here it is, isolated now on Clark. Watch what he does. Drives him off. He'll make a pivot. Right there, it's open. He's down on one team. Montana was right on him all the time. Didn't want to go anywhere else. Some throw, huh? The opening drive was by the Saints. They drove down, and the interception by Dwight Hicks stopped that one. And for then, it's been San Francisco, San Francisco, and perhaps San Francisco again. It's a 10 nothing lead. Craig and Tyler. Toss. Back to Wendell Tyler. A lot of Saints there. Oh, and he straightened up at about the three-yard line. But don't ever feel sorry for number 26. I've seen him knocked out three times and come back... Uh, in the Super Bowl against the Rams, or with the Rams against Pittsburgh. He's a tough little guy. Oh, this is good defense. They're playing good defense today. Johnny Poe, number 25, comes up. Does a good job of forcing. Look at that. Well, you don't hit any better than that at the corner position, Brookie. That was a <laughs> textbook tackle. I know. Wendell went over teacups, as they say in the dressing room trade. It's second down and goal. Drive. Power drive to the right side. Wendell Tyler scores. Fifth touchdown for number 26. Pulled by Randy Cross out in front. Roger 
Craig on a lead block. Tyler does the rest, struggles it in after finding his team. That's his fifth touchdown of the season. As Tommy told you, that's Pops in the National Football League. Where's he now to try the extra point? Ray's life has been a little up and down today. This one is up. Boy, what has been a very viciously played defensive game by New Orleans has turned into what looks like a rout. San Francisco 17, New Orleans himself again. He does that because of a near fatal accident he had in 1980 and covered and say one thing, he's some player. Kitty Duckett waits for Wershey's kick at the nine yard line. Duckett makes a good break and gets the wedge out to about the 25 yard line. Bill Ring making the tackle there. Incredible statistic. New Orleans with 40 yards on offense. San Francisco with 168 and here comes Snake Stabler. You know, he said a week or so ago that uh, this old dog hasn't been in his last fight. <laughs> He's lost about 35 pounds. He looks like a triathlete. There's the other Alabama quarterback, Richard Todd. Did not have a great day, but quarterback lived to fight again. This guy has been through the wars. He looks like Willie Nelson when he plays like Snake Saber. The toss. Back to Rogers running the toss outside. Rogers up in it at the 30-yard line by Williamson. I had people tell me that if the Saints had come out and just run the toss to the big fella against Atlanta in the opening game, that they were the ones that would have won probably by that same score, and he would have had the 200 and some odd yards rushing, and Staper just came out. couldn't come up with it. A lot was chasing. He doesn't know. He has a new body. He's got a new arm. He sailed that thing downfield. You know, the rap on him here in recent years is that he can't get it deep. You don't throw it any better deeper than this. Tight spiral, too. A clean pass. Nobody threw a cleaner pass than... Oh, he wanted this one. The man dancing the Cotton Eye Joe right there. Number 16. Good throw and almost a tremendous result. Third down and five. The blitz is on. In and out of the hands of number 88. Good low. I'm not so sure Snake likes Show him that they're going to be coming after him if he's and not let him sit back in that pocket. Ray Septian's field goal in a very bitter battle with Philadelphia and Dallas. Rams and Pittsburgh still knotted before half. Well, we've got a good one here. Hanson the punter. He's the young man with the favorite play. Oh, look at the hang time on this. Macklemore's going to finally fair catch one at the 25. That one had ice on it. It went over the rim of the stadium. It did. 45-yard punt. It took about 10 seconds, and no return. We'll be make no mistake. This could be a very, very close game. It's 17 nothing right now. Montana play action pass, getting a lot of room. He's going to run for it, and now he's going to get out of bounds at the 40 into the New Orleans bench. Pretty casual. He's got feet like Fred Astaire. There have been very few quarterbacks that can handle themselves in the pocket and get a ready list of 80 or 90 or 100 plays together like he does any better. He's really a master. No, they said that, uh, Bill Wall said that's the thing that has amazed him most about Montana, Montana is his ability to retain an entire game plan and uh, assemble everything and use it all during the course of a ballgame. Vastly underpaid at a million two a year. <laughs> First and ten. For San Francisco, that's Cooper in motion. Inside drive to Craig. Good defense. Good, tough defense on the line of scrimmage. Ricky Jackson got part of it. Kovac went under. Well, this team led the NFC in total defense a year ago, and 
everybody was sort of shocked when Riggs and Atlanta tore him up in that opening game. They played Tampa Bay a much better defensive game, but the offense has really sort of sputtered. Montana breaks him out. Streets Nehemiah, a swift one to the top of the screen. Second down and nine. Reverse as Clark comes up with the play action. Throws it back to Craig and underthrow. Craig at the 35. Talked about the scheme of things in the 49er offense. This was a play that was put in just yesterday. After a week's practice, Bill Walsh put in two new plays <laughs> at the Saturday practice and probably wish they'd have put in just one. Poor Craig had to block it. It looked like somebody playing the hot corner. He was right about third base trying to block it. Clark catches him, but he doesn't throw them quite as effectively. Third down and 10 now. Francis is outside. Craig. Good tackle at the 41-yard line. By Gary. Russell Gary made an excellent tackle on Craig, and now the flags are down. Looked like maybe the big fellow, Russ Francis, was clearing out and maybe called for a pick. New Orleans will obviously want the football. Pass it. Number 81 offense. Penalty is declined. It's fourth down. The cornerbacks, the old cornerbacks, and I always spot those picks, Dan. Especially with those big guys <laughs> trying to wade through there. Russ Francis trying to make a pick, and Runniger now back in for his second punt. First one was third punt. Pretty good hang time and a driving kick. Fields is going to run it back. But only to the 17 yard line. Good coverage by San Francisco. Boy, a punt in this stadium is a major event, isn't it? Well, it, it really is, and it shouldn't be today. Now, you know, everyone's heard about the winds of Candlestick Park, and that, that is the case a lot of the time. But this time of year, they're really not here. During the baseball season is when the wind blows here. But right now, it's calm. Candlestick Park, San Francisco, one of the gorgeous days even the people from the Bay Area will see for a while. This is a beautiful day for football, and the 49ers are, are laying it on New Orleans. Sabler is the quarterback. George Rogers accelerating to the 25, make it to 24. Remember a couple of years ago, he ballooned up to about 227, had an awful year after that sensational rookie year, and then the big guy went into some kind of an off-season program. When he hit 218, I mean, that's like a trunk. He, he is strong. He made a, a breakaway in a game here and was caught behind by Willie Harper, the 49ers linebacker, and that's when he said that he made up his mind that he would never let that happen again, and he lost the weight. Good point, Wayne. Good point. Rogers looks like he's beginning to get a little nasty, baby. Out to the 29-yard line to the 30. Stucky making the tackle. Stabler has come out and somehow injected some life into that offense. It even looks like the offensive line is coming off. Now he's got to some way squeeze seven points out of this drive. They've just got to have seven to get back in this ball game. They've got plenty of time, 540 left. He can take him down just at his leisure as long as he gets them there. That's what he's going to try and do. The first down play, play action. Stabler running, throwing sort of a waste pitch, and the flags are down. Ronnie Lott cannot believe what is going to happen. But the ball was thrown away from the receiver. Automatic first. They'll move the sticks. Almost could have been one of those uncatchables. Keep in mind that the 49ers had one. Number 42. Keep in mind that the 49ers had Washington whipped on Monday night until the second half. You can punch yourself out and put a fall back a little bit. It looks like the Saints are getting some energy. And Watts coming off uh, with, a, with a bad knee. His, his knee kind of went on. They've got Dana McLemore over there at the right cornerback now. Two corners. 5.36 left before half. And Stabler's the quarterback. Dumps it to Rogers. Rogers breaks one tackle and does not get rid of Fodhorst, the young linebacker in there making a sure tackle. 
Excuse me, in the, excuse me, in the opening game against Detroit, on the very first play of the game, the 49ers lost their starting right cornerback, Eric Wright. A couple plays later, Ronnie Lott got hurt and had to come out of the ballgame. So they played Mario Clark and McLemore some of that game. And now they're back at that again. So they've had problems in a defensive secondary. Let's see if Faber will go right to work on number 43. He's the youngest and most inexperienced over on the right side. Faber from the eye. Good pass block. Brenner. And I might carry that one step further to see Stabler, a left-handed passer. He is always favored working that side of the field where they have Dana McLemore now playing the cornerback spot. Left-hander looking to that side. I guess the vision is there. Always threw one of the finest passes. Uh, I always thought it was a fairly short pass until I saw him throw the 50-yarder earlier on that first pass play. A lot of time left in a football game. And this team came on late to beat Tampa Bay in the last two minutes a week ago. First and ten. The drive. Rogers hits, spins. Wayne Wilson in for Rogers. Excuse me. And maybe a couple of yards, and then they take him back and dump him on the 43. Carlton Williamson there, and Big Louie, Louie Kelcher. They said they got to weigh him on the air freight scales. What do you figure he's going now? Well, not to, he's big enough to have a zip code instead of a number. <laughs> Some people are estimating 335 or yeah. so, huh? I don't think you can weigh him in the clubhouse. Let's put it that way. Second down and 10. Stabler. Tyrone Young making a jumping catch at the 29. Lacklemore hanging on to somebody that is so much taller, of course. Six foot six. You know, basically the 49ers have a, a blitz unit in there now. They have Ron Ferrari, a real quick linebacker. They have Mike Walter. The call was on McLemore, the cornerback. They have Mike Walter, so they were blitzing Stabler, and he went he went to work on McLemore, spotted the blitz, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Tyrone Young, who's 6'6", six, six, uh, and powers over McLemore, made a, a fine leaping catch. So Stabler's got him inside the 30. It was Tyrone that got the team started in the comeback victory over Tampa Bay a, a week ago. Tyrone Young, now it's Saber back. Dump, oh, what a throw sidearm. The guy's out in the flat. Forced out at the 25-yard line by Fonhos. What a sidearm delivery by Stabler. Two field goals by Septian. That's a tough game. Dallas hasn't broken out yet over the Eagles. Marion Campbell's still a very good defensive coach, isn't he? Detroit with a couple now. 14-0 over Tampa Bay in the second quarter. Washington, 13-7 over the Giants. The Giants are still alive in that game. Second down toss back to Rogers. Stacked up. Just on the grass. Natural turf here, of course at Candlestick, where they're playing baseball. You can still see the infield dirt. When Wayne and I played, this was a common stadium for us to play in. Wouldn't it be like this? The peeled infield and the mound. When I played, they didn't even take the mound off. I could fall down over it trying to cover somebody. Louis Kelcher comes off. Big play for New Orleans. 2.48 before half. Third down three. Stabler. He's got an open receiver. Gross can't get it in the end zone. Just off his fingertips as Hicks and Homo were in his wake. You know, they might let him go for this again. Here you see it. Stabler, pretty good protection up front now by the Saints offensive line. Gross, the, the third down possession type guy, usually catches the ball in a 12 to 15 yard range, but they sent him deep here and he had it and Saber just overthrew him in the end zone. Timeout Saints. Ed Gilman. Looks like he's in pretty good shape. He played quite a bit in the preseason. Number two, they have another quarterback on the on the safe that's playing, but right now it's the Snakes in there. Don't forget, the first half of the doubleheader here on CBS, it all starts with the NFL today with the crew back in New York. Then it's the 49ers against the Eagles. 
St. Louis Cardinals against New Orleans. The Redskins against New England. That's the first game that you can take your choice of. And in the second half, the crazy Chicago Bears against the Seattle Seahawks or Green Bay against Dallas. You get man in that situation. Remember what he told us yesterday was he does not want to go into the fourth quarter in a close game with this team because they have too many people that can make it happen in one play. Fourth down. And three. Table. Complete to Tyro. Mario Clark pushing him out there. I'll tell you, Tyrone Young runs a good pass pattern. Nice looking young receiver, and this guy doesn't work this side of the field much. Look him look over here now. Went to first he went left, then he went down the middle and brought it over here right on time. This was a timing pattern, kind of a comeback pattern. We haven't seen that in the league in a long time, but Tyrone Young ran it, took it down about 12 and brought it back to about the 10-yard mark, and Staver had it right on his number. A 12-yarder, as you can see, the clock heading for that two-minute warning. It'll come before Snake gets to squeeze off another round, as they say in Western Chuck. 17 to nothing, two minutes before halftime, and the Saints are still in this ballgame, folks. A new series here for the Saints, and they like to know what's going on out there in this situation. It's a fun coach to play for. All those players love it. Here's the toss to George Rogers. Going to get outside. Look out. Now they cut him back. Rogers inside the 10 and then stacked up as Buns and Williamson gang up on the tailback. Battle of quick people out there, wasn't it? You know, we've talked about the quickness of, of New Orleans' defensive unit. San Francisco much the same way. Watch this team defense here. Kind of a, a counter right there with a fullback going left and in a almost an inside type handoff. Watch Williamson 27, Buns 57 out. And a good team position there on defense. Good defense. A pick up of call it two. Second down eight. Saber going for a tough and has it. Tyrone Young. And I don't know why he doesn't start on this Saints team, but I'd sure have him warmed up somewhere and no. have him ready because he took that one a perfect strike at dead full gallop and for he, a touch. He's a youngster. I mean, they're playing him more and more just his second year from from Florida, 6'6", 200 pounds, and a great throw by number 16. Just a great throw. He threw it in the double coverage, but waited for the exact moment for him to clear. Ronnie Lott, Dwight Hicks, oh. both there. Watch this. Oh. Huh? It's the only place it could be. That's Cork. Yeah. Tyrone Young with a touch, and we said the Saints are back. Morton Anderson's kick is good. An eight-yard touchdown pass from the Snake to Tyrone Young just before halftime, and I think we have a new football game. Hey, Bergie, 120. 120 left. That's a lot of time for Montana. Saints got the ball and drove down and then had an interception, Todd's interception, and seemed to lose a little of their inspirational feel, and then they've gotten it back under Snake Stabler. now will get a chance to field and run back to kickoff. Don't forget at halftime, the scores and highlights of all the games with Brent and Irv back in the studio in New York, and then Irv Cross does a Legends of the Game, a fellow that we got to know very well, and Bob Hayes, the Olympic sprinter who plays for the Cowboys and these 49ers. Should be a great halftime show right here on CBS. There's some discussion as to whether it was Goodlow or Tyrone Young that scored that touchdown. We're getting a 88-89. It looked like 89 to me. And they're saying upstairs it was 88. I don't know. I might bet on us on that one. We'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll find out. It was a touchdown. The Saints know that. The guy gets the sport coat. They can decide that back in New Orleans on Monday. Monroe and Harmon back to return. Morton Anderson. The young Dane. It's a good high kick. It's going to be short, but it's high. Harmon at the 10. Harmon breaks one tackle, two tackles. At the 32 and out of bounds. Stopping the clock and saving a minute 14 for the offense. The 
I was trying to explain to somebody the other day what San Francisco looked like, and I said they might be one of the most intelligent teams that I've seen, that every player seems to fit, and they know how to play their particular position very well, you know, not with outstanding ability in all cases, just good football players. Yeah, they all have roles. There's a lot of role players on the team, and, and they all accept that. And spread the wealth around. First and ten. Montana back to throw. Going for the corner pattern, intercepted by Johnny Paul. Johnny Paul, if he gets to that other sideline, but Solomon's chasing him. And Russ Francis and Solomon bury him at the 35. Look out, folks. There's still a minute left on the clock, and I don't see any yellow flags on the field. Surprise, a first down pass. Montana's first interception of the year. 17-yard return by Poe. It looked like he rolled off on his own. No one there, and then kind of drifted back. Montana thought he'd stay in the flat, but he drifted back, made the interception, and then I'll tell you what, he showed pretty good speed going all the way across the field and getting out of bounds and stopping the clock at 59 seconds. A classy defensive job by the Saints, and now Stabler has him turned on. The safety blitz. Stabler's knocked down, and the 49ers are going to be called for roughing. Jeff Fuller blitz, and the snake man unloaded. Now you got to take care of the old folks back there. I'll guarantee you that uh, if that would have been a rookie quarterback, this probably wouldn't have been called. But uh, you got to protect the people that are in the archives. They're going to be in the archives. Something of pastor, 47 defense. That's pretty late, I think. They called Williamson on it, but I think two or three people could have been flagged. Put in the blitz on him, but uh, he had the right play call for that blitz. It was a screen pass, and uh, he hadn't been able to complete it. He might have done some business. They're chatting for defense now. If you worry about you worry about Snake Stabler, it's like worried about Willie Nelson's guitar. It looks like it's going to fall apart, but it plays good. Stabler's numbers in less than a quarter. The draw play to Wilson. Boy, good defense there. They were waiting for that one. Bodhus, the young linebacker, the little brother of the big tackle. You know that the, the snake was anticipating a blitz again that time and hoped that he could hand it off on the draw and pop a long one. Remember, these 49ers, it looked like they had the Redskins knocked out at halftime. They hit them down out. three times, didn't they? Yeah, and then they sort of let them come back, and then it became a fire eater. And Bob Phillips is the kind of guy that coaches, hey, keep cool. Remember before the Tampa game, he said, let's just stay cool, guys. We're going to be all right. We're going to win some games. When we get excited, let's get excited about the sixth or seventh week of the season, not, uh, not the first or second week. There's Norm Hecker talking to Ryan Hicks about the secondary coverages with the nickel and how many people. Eric Rhodes is also another coach. And Walsh stays back and keeps an ear in that huddle, but lets his people have their authority, doesn't he? Norb Hecker is on the headset with George Seifert, who is a defensive coordinator, who is upstairs in the press box. The 49ers do a lot of things on defense. They show you as many fronts and uh, mixed defenses and can confuse a quarterback uh, as well as any defense in the league. Well, what are you anticipating from Bum Phillips and company and King Hill and those offensive people for New Orleans? Are you thinking about something very quick? Well, I'm thinking about the tendencies of number 16, Penn Stabler, over the years. In the first two games that New Orleans played, the tight ends only caught one pass. Historically, Stabler likes to use the tight end. Remember when with Dave Casper with, with uh, the Raiders and uh, with Mike Barber when he was down at Houston. So I wouldn't be surprised that, uh, that he kind of looks over the middle and, and might want to get one to that big tight end, Hobie Brenner. Now, Matt Lamore is playing the right corner, as we've told you. Lot has been out. Stabler out to Wilson and he drops the football. It was not a lateral, but it was close. 40 seconds left on the clock here at Candlestick. And the reason they have Wayne Wilson in the ball game right now is that he's a, a much better pass receiver than George Rogers. But uh, Snake threw that ball a little bit hard and a little bit low on the, the attempt to get the screen off. And now Goodlow comes in, number 88 with a play, too. Got some outside receivers. We'll try to set them for you. Gross is to the top of the screen. Tyrone, Young, and Goodlow to the bottom. Right to the bottom. Stabler running the inside draw play to Wilson to the 15-yard line. The clock is running at 33-32. Louis Kelcher 
recovery to make him a big tackle. What else could it be with Louis Kilcher? <laughs> We're going to let the time run off here and, and uh, get the field goal unit in. 18-17 and counting now, as you can see. And Young Anderson had missed his first field goal earlier of the season, so he is a very dependable, good kicker. As Bum Phillips told me yesterday, he says, that Anderson kid, he's not a fake. He's a football player, too. You know how Bum feels about specialists. And so, with four seconds left at halftime, what was a laugher for the people here in the beautiful sun of Northern California is now going to get very close. That's Anderson. Berkey, he may have a problem. Uh, he's a left-footed kicker, and when this ball is set down, it's on a hash mark over there. He might have to be, he may have to start out in the dirt and then, and then go up on the grass portion, and uh, huh. there's an inch or two difference there. It's like so to be in half in a bunker and half out as a golfer. You just need yeah. to be all the way out in the dirt or all the way on the grass. Exactly right. right. And uh, good point. Believe me, he'll be thinking about it. Of course, you kick. You know what goes through a kicker's mind. Well, I was worried every time out there. <laughs> <laughs> I had something to worry about. The buck stops there with the kicker. If he ends up. Uh, partly on the, on the dirt, and he is. He's going to have one foot on there, so it's not as bad as I thought, but it's still going to be a bit uncomfortable for him. Guido Merkins is holding the 14 quarterback. It's down. It's up. It's good. Well played by the offense, by Stabler, and of course by Anderson. A good kick. And what was 17-0 is now 17-10, and the gun goes off. And Bum doesn't look too unhappy. Oh, he's pretty thankful. I bet he has a bullpen right now to go to, which he did. They're warning people early in the second period to don't go away that if they change their tempo a little bit on offense that New Orleans can make it interesting. Uh, have the 49ers punched themselves out, or do you think the Saints have just sort of picked it up? Well, I really don't think so. I, I just really have to credit the, the New Orleans defense for the Saints even being in this game. You know, people will say Kenny Stabler came in and, and, uh, and put some points on the board for him, but, you know, it, it could have been 28 to nothing or 31 to nothing before he even got in there if New Orleans' uh, defense, which had been on the field a long time, hadn't, hadn't played so well. And, of course, the, the main thing about their defense is that when they play well, they're extremely talented, and they can make a tough thing like the interception by Poe just before half. Made some things happen. It was Montana's first okay. interception of the year, and uh, hey, it was just one of the highlights. We might also mention that the Rams are losing at halftime to Pittsburgh, and Ferragamo has a fracture of a finger on his throwing hand. Of course, they're in the Division II, and Atlanta was upset by Minnesota. So uh, should the 49ers hang on and win this ball game, uh, they would go three up in the... the first half and there were a lot of them well this is the the pass montana to solomon right here where solomon came in motion kind of got lost down around the tight end and then took it up over the middle took it deep against the zone here comes the help but it wasn't there in time and he just made it into the end zone sharp throw now this is the second touchdown by the 49ers wendell tyler on the run roger craig with a re lead block Von horse and crossover on that right side and and he's in with his fifth touchdown of the season for a window. Some all-purpose back. Great tandem there you saw. And, Craig and old and dogs can still hunt. We, we call this Tyrone <laughs> Young, but it's Kenny Staber to Eugene Goodlow who makes a sensational catch in double coverage right there. It was Goodlow's uh, first touchdown catch in, of the season, and we've sort of been waiting for him for a couple of years. He came out of Canada. He went to Kansas State for a brief time, and Bum Phillips had that Canadian connection and brought him back down, and he's a very talented young receiver. Yeah, so he got a uh, hundred uh, passes up there one season. Remember now, Todd uh, started and went Midway through the second period before Staber came on, you could see rushing. New Orleans with only 65, but San Francisco with 70, pretty even there. Yeah, it looks like the time of possession is the thing that really surprises me because I, I thought right there, looking at that, uh, Brookie, that, uh, that San Francisco would have had the ball a lot longer than that because I thought that New Orleans defense was on, uh, on the field much longer than that. Now that's, that's a surprising stat for me. Turnovers is the big thing right there. That's what's kept the Saints going. They've got three, the 49ers won. Yeah, and all, all the turnovers are interceptions. Two very cautious quarterbacks starting out, except that Todd seemed to throw a couple of them just without looking to see what the coverage was by the by the defense. There's Montana. He had one picked off and, and sort of allowed the Saints to get back in this game by throwing what I thought was a lackadaisical throw for him when he went to the corner trying for...
Solomon and allowed Johnny Poe to pick that ball off. Yeah, I think he just uh, misread the defense on that one. I really do. I think that, that he thought he was getting a zone over there, and then Poe would be rotated up, and he could get it in between, and, uh, and Poe drifted back and uh, didn't have the touch on it. There are the numbers on the two quarterbacks that started this ball, or that are on the New Orleans side, tied with two of seven, five, and three interceptions. Very ineffective. And Aber coming on very quickly. But, Brooke, you know, you look around the league, and any quarterback that changes team, teams, as you see, Stabler there has problems. Look at, you know, David Woodley with Pittsburgh right now. He's not putting a lot of points on the board. Right. So that happened. And here he is, the Wizard. Used to be right across the bay with the Raiders, and then to Houston. Out of Alabama. What an interesting person and a great guy. And very popular wherever he's ever been with the fans, the people that pay the money to come and see these ball games. There's Ray Wersey who had his first field goal attempt blocked, so he missed his consecutive streak. It ends at 26. Then he had the second one partially blocked, and it still went through after getting a, a recall and getting to kick another one at the end of the first quarter. Duncan and Fields, and Wersey is kicking off. Ooh, this is a long kick. Wersey drives Duckett to the goal line. Duckett has a big hole with the wedge and spins to the 34-yard line with a big leap, and I don't see any flags down. Right here now, it, it, in tandem, if you tuck in behind that wedge too tightly, you can't pick your hole. But he was in good position, about seven, eight yards behind it. They got a couple of blocks, and, and he had a, a seam or two to pop into. 35-yard return by Duckett, and New Orleans seems to have the same zip they finished the first half with. And San Francisco sort of catchy a little bit. Stabler, high formation. George Rogers held somewhat in check in that first half, but I sense that he sort of ran a little bit harder after Stabler came in, and that's strictly from up here, so don't bet on anything on that. And it's the very first play when Sabler came in. He gave it to uh, number 38. Remember what Bill Walsh told us uh, on Saturday, Tom? He said if he gets in a close game, uh, that's when he really feel, uh, fears Rodgers the most because uh, the guy can grind it out, keep the ball away from you, and also pop a long one. Guy Jean is the up back in front of George Rogers, the fellow that Wayne Walker was talking about. Sabler complete to Goodlow. In, in San Francisco territory to the 47-yard line. Dana McLemore hanging on. They're working on McLemore a little bit. Well, Ronnie like, Lott was hurt again with the knee, was it this time it looked like? Yes, it was. I think his knee gave out on him on a play over near the sideline. And All here it is. Stabler likes to work this side, as we mentioned, being a left-hander. That's McLemore. Number 43, Goodlow, who caught that touchdown pass in the first half. First and 10. Stabler driving the Saints. Inside drive to Gaijan. Look out, he goes back against it. The flags are down. Hokey Gaijan, the, the Baton Rouge bayonet we called him yesterday. We talked to him a little bit. He gets to the 41. Looks like he cut back against the grain. Holding against New Orleans. You know how hard it is to hold on a run <laughs> anymore because you can use your hands. New rule this year, you know, that you can you can push and extend your hands. Number 60 offense. Down. That's Cart, the big uh, Arkansas Razorback at center. He's as wide as he is tall and as thick as he is wide. And as strong as he is wide and, and thick. Number 60, you'll see it. Number 78 is Tuiasa Sopo. Boy, it's tough to see anything from right there, but you have to do something pretty flagrant to get a, a hole called on you as we pass. Two tight ends. Staber now out from the flat. That's Scott. We didn't know if he was going to play or not today. Scott over that 50 and back into San Francisco territory. Ellison makes a pretty good play on this one. Ellison, who uh, started every game last year as a rookie, helped him a lot playing alongside Hacksaw Reynolds out there. And Hacksaw came in and could help him make the calls and stuff, but good lateral movement. You know, it seems to me like when Staber is at the controls that he does something here, does something there, does something... He sort of keeps your defense walking on edge a little bit. He spread him out already. Second down and now 12. The toss back to Rod, uh, Wilson. Wilson dragging people to the 43-yard line. Wayne Wilson from Shepherd College. 
very underrated football player and doesn't get a chance to play a lot. Well, he's been a good one, though, for him. When, when uh, Rodgers was down last year, Wilson came in and had three straight 100-yard games. Ended up with 787 yards on the year. They like him in there, as I mentioned, on those dual situations, run and pass situations, because he runs good pass patterns and has good hands. Wayne Wilson is in there on third down and five. Gross is in motion back to the formation. Saber gets it to him at the 40. He's going to be short of the first down. Homo making a tackle there. Pretty good little pattern, though. A little under root by the fellow that Wayne Walker said is the Pat Tilly type receiver. Everybody has a good one if they are a good team right now, don't they? Well, when uh, when Stabler first came over to New Orleans and, and started working with growth, he said that uh, he's like a Fred Boletnikoff, but only maybe with a little bit more speed. Pretty good recommendation. I'd say. But Freddie caught everything thrown at him. They're marking off a penalty. We did not get a preliminary call yet by Tom Dooley and his crew. Yeah, first down, an automatic defensive holding call that we did not see a flag on or Didn't see have a, flag a call. Or did I hear the number call. Saints have taken this second half kickoff after scoring with a field goal just before the half. It'll be first down now for first, New Orleans. First and ten, they move to six. Rogers is back in, the big tailback. Guy John's the fullback. And this is Rogers. Rogers wades through people to about the 35. Ducky making the stop there. Remember when McVeigh, the fellow that's in the front office of John McVeigh, in charge of personnel for the 49ers, right. he said the hardest thing to find now when you go out looking for people to help your team are defensive ends. It's a defensive end, and they've lost a couple of them. Of course, Fred Dean is out, and uh, Jeff Silver got hurt. Here's Tina Turner, who we mentioned early. That's big Brock right there, about 270 pounds. He must have been off balance. Could Keena do that to him? He did it. <laughs> and you know, he said there are more quarterbacks available than there are defensive ends. It looks like perhaps New Orleans is running a little bit at those areas. Second down and seven. Saber quickly. The flag is thrown late. John Tice. A tight end, Williamson, the perpetrator, and the fans editorialize. Well, we mentioned earlier that Saber likes to use everyone, particularly the tight ends, and he went to the middle that time. That was the first pass directed at a tight end all afternoon by the New Orleans Saints. Let's take a look at it. Tice is number 82, second year player out of Maryland, big guy, about six foot five. Williamson in there. snap. Sabre going down the middle again this time. It's going to be a touchdown for Brenner. The Saints never gave up the football. Hate to say I told you so too, huh? And he yeah. likes the tight end. And gets them all spread out and yep. comes right down the middle. Worked the outside and came back with Brenner down the middle on a fly pattern against the zone more than likely. Very effective to send your tight end straight. They get on an inside release. Look at that, wide open. It, and been a, either, it was either a zone and, and uh, the free safety didn't get over or uh, it was a blown coverage. The linebacker was supposed to cover him from the line and that didn't happen. Anderson, extra point out of Merkin's hole is good. And the best thing that maybe happened to the safe under Bone Phillips were having a bad start in this ball game because they have certainly not only come back, but they have the impetus. As Bum looks on, it's 17 all in the third by Derek Carmen. He has to run it out now. That's Carl Monroe with the ball. And Carl gets shellacked at about the 15-yard line, and they almost bobble that back into the end zone. They'd have bobbled it back in the end zone. They'd have had to run it out, or it would have been a safety. They can't leave it lane on the one-yard line either. Six plays, 66 yards, one penalty against New Orleans and two penalties against San Francisco. And I'm telling you, the Saints are not going to leave this ballpark without giving a good account of themselves. They were 9 of 14 since he's been in there. Two touchdowns. Montana very quiet since the first quarter. The handoff to Wendell Tyler. Boy, that defense came up. A loss of a couple just trying to run a sweep. Doc Kovach. Ricky Jackson strung it out and 
Kovach came in. Watch number 57 play it here. He's got the guard in good shape. And look at Kovach. He read that thing and flew through that hole to make the hit. I'll tell you, Ricky Jackson plays blockers about as well as any linebacker this side of Hugh Green. 200, <laughs> 240 pounder. He's got some strength. He and Hugh used to play at Pittsburgh together. He claimed he did most of the good tackling. Hughie got all the All-American accolades, but they're good friends still. It's second down now and 13. Montana. Hit from behind and dropped. Jim Wilk finally came around, and they're celebrating on the line of scrimmage for New Orleans. What a sack all the way around the horn. Wilk's over on the right side, working against number 77, Bubba Paris like he took an inside move it looked like they all did over there yes sir probably took a couple steps outside and then wheeled it back inside and made the hit athletic that's the best thing you can say about the defensive players including Wilkes on this same team they're quick they're big and they're tall there are a lot, a lot of tall people there Montana is out now being hit that time and Matt Cavanaugh the former pit quarterback is in his first play, a throw from the end zone. There's Cooper, Cooper out to the 20. Pretty gutsy call by Kavanaugh coming in first shot, throwing it out of the end zone. Bergy, I think that uh, Montana is, is being bothered by just the recurring rib problems that he picked up in that Monday night game against Washington. He was nailed by Dexter Manley in the rib cage, and uh, they had to design a special pass. A 14-yard game, but now Runniger is having to kick. And this is a tremendous punt. Fields will take it at the 35. Jitter Fields to the 39-yard line. And the crowd begins the sense that the 49ers have gotten out of that one. They bit the bullet. Look out. Here comes Stabler. And the offensive line is Mammoth. It's a 17 all-time. It's be coming in from the right of your screen. Montana downfield, nothing there. Gets hit from behind. Number 94, Wilkes. And as I said, Montana came into the game with a rib cage problem, and I just imagine that uh, that is still what's bothering him. It's the team there on the bench. And you know, it's an injury you cannot protect. I know oh, the black jacket helps, but every time you breathe or turn, you turn those ribs. Fabler back with a first down at the 40-yard line. The Saints are red hot. They scored 17 points unanswered. Rogers on the cross play. Rogers breaks out and tries to get to midfield and almost does. Buns hangs on there. Let's set that uh, San Francisco secondary, Wayne, and see who's playing over there right Will, now. Will, but check this replay out and, and check the block here by Hokey Gaija on number 46, right there on Jack Reynolds after Reynolds had penetration, and that was the key. Reynolds read that extremely well and was two yards deep in the backfield, but Gaijan made a good adjustment, picked it up, and that was the springer. Ronnie Lott has a bruised toe. He's out of there. McLemore is playing the right corner. We'll set the rest of them in a moment. Inside goes Rogers. Into San Francisco territory. Jack Reynolds plugging it up there. And I sense the 49ers are hanging on just a little bit now. Well, they're a little bit battered. We just found out that Ronnie Lott's injury was not a knee. It was a foot or a toe problem, and he probably will not be back. So they'll be going with uh, Dana McLemore, Mario Clark. Remember, with Eric Wright, number 21, their starter, told us yesterday, I could play if they need me. You know, they, they may get him back in there, but he's not there now. The drive play with Rogers. Boy, they're running right at people now. I'm going to see if... You want to take on that big offensive line, and it is gigantic. Well, Stabler's calling his own plays, and, uh, and we asked Bum Phillips why he's one of the few coaches in the league that uh, lets the quarterback call, and he said, because I'm not in the huddle. I can't poke my head in there and say to, to Brock the right tackle, can you get a hook on your guy? Or, or I can't say to Obrey, can you blow your man off the line? I need it, and uh, the quarterback can. That's why I let him call. Keep in mind, the 49 er defensive linemen are giving away at least 20 pounds per man. The toss. Rogers cuts back to the 40 and a half yard line. Jack Reynolds making another tackle. The crowd is very quiet. Look, this, this, this is just turning into a real tough football game right now at the line of scrimmage. These two teams are very physical and, and, and both getting after each other both ways. I like it a lot. Football at its best. From Brock 
to Chris Ward, the other tackle. The average is probably close to 280. And this is a large play in this football game. Third down, and call it four. Wayne Wilson is in there, number 30. Stabler, Goodlow to the 32. They were in a nickel defense that time, and they took a chance, and safety blitz Stabler. They shot Carlton Williamson in, and, and Stabler, with the veteran that he is, read it right away. No question. He went over there on the slant-in pattern where Williamson had vacated and picks it up. You can't beat the big X. And a fast read. A Experience. fast read by a veteran quarterback. Yes, sir. And the blitz never gets there. It's like having dynamite. You don't like the fuse. Somebody's left holding the back. Mercy's hit. The safe is riding again. Great drop back. Stabler going for Goodlow, who's open, and overthrows him in the end zone. McLemore was in his wake and got lucky. Other scores on weekend number three. Pittsburgh beating the Rams 17-7. As we said, Ferragamo has a fractured finger and is out of there. That's in the third. Detroit 14-7 over Tampa Bay. That's not safe. San Diego 28-7 over Houston. That might be safe. Fabler, beard and all, comes to the line of seven seconds down and dead. The toss, weak side run by Wilson. Wilson breaks tackles and gets crawling to the 25. Let's see where they spot it. I'm telling you, 59,000 plus are sort of sitting on their hands waiting for the 49ers to get it back. Wayne Wilson out of a tiny Shepherd College, six-year veteran. He was cut by Bum when he was this, when he was with the Oilers. He, he, the Saints picked him up, and then Bum came to the Saints, and Wilson thought, "Hello, oh, is it going to happen to me again?" He said, "It's pretty monsoon, and, and uh, he's playing extremely well for them." Montana and company. Clark talking to him, saying, "How do you feel?" Here's the inside throw. Good old look out. Oh, good saving tackle at the 20 by Mario Clark. Goodlow was heading for the flag. They need to isolate some of those 49er defenders. 14-14, Tampa Bay with John McKay perhaps using the whip, or at least going to it for the stretch. Lions playing another close one. They win them three of them. Giants with a score now over Washington, 14-13. Boy, Washington, capital. That's big news in the nation's capital. First and ten. The plus yarding Rodgers really hit at the line of scrimmage. A double-team tackle is McCall and company. And I can't see who else came. I believe number 94 helped. Culture. Hard to tell. Big pile right there. But Milt McCall came in. It looked like he got the initial hit from the outside linebacker spot. And that was 94 Louis Kelcher. The human zip code. Coming over the top on you. That is a shock, isn't it? McCall with those three sacks against the Redskins right now. It is desperation time. Less than four minutes in the third period. Second down ten. Stabler being hit. Back from behind. Jim Stuckey with a real good pursuit of Stabler. Uh, Stuckey now. Well, I know I told you Tom was concerned about making this team on the last cut before the Detroit game. And uh, he has played extremely well these last three games. Gets the sack right there. He was the number one draft choice. Now, you get, that, now you get that nickel defense in there on third down and almost 18. The toss back to Wilson. He pulled out the 25. Tina Turner making a great tackle on the outside. The new father. Right here, Saber trying to cross him up on a, a long yardage situation. But you don't play it any better than this. Had a guy down at his ankles, played him off, and still with the speed to get outside with that back and make the play. That's what she said. Someday the defenses will be six linemen and five people like Tina Turner backing them up. That may be the defense of the modern era. Anderson now trying from the 31. It'll be a 41-yard field goal attempt. He's a strong-legged one. 
Oh boy, carried by about 15 yards for the first time the Saints lead in the football game. 3-11 left in the third. New Orleans 20, San Francisco 17. Well, no telling, it doesn't, but it does not look like he's going to get up and get in on this next offensive series. That is right, rib cage that he's holding center with the ice on it. Looks like it was. Anderson kickoff, the left-footed one. Oh, it's a driving kick. Monroe doesn't oh. even get the fair catch it. It's out of the end zone, and the Saints are pumped up. We were just saying, if you showed these films to John McKay and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they wouldn't think they played this team a week ago. Sequence for the 49ers with some of the medical staff for the 49ers. He's going into the locker room. It is his rib. He's having difficulty breathing. They're not sure what it is. They may have to x-ray. And you don't take a chance with ribs because you can puncture a lung. You're looking at the young man, Kavanaugh. He used to be with New England. Before that, the University of Pittsburgh. Inside had a wiggle Tyler explodes to the 29 and gives the crowd something to cheer about. Kovac it's a good thing Kovac made the tackle there. Picked a hole here. Looked like this play was designed to go to the left side of center. Look at Wendell make the adjustment back there with his shoulder square to the line and, and looking, found a hole. The old run to daylight theory and got a bunch. Saints have come back to dominate from the time that Snake Stabler walked on the field. It was like a adrenaline was being pumped into him. Russell Gary is down, number 20. And he's replaced by Bobby Johnson. It looks he walked off. It looks like he's just nicked a little bit. Right now, on second down and a foot or so, it's Wendell Tyler straight ahead. Looks like he has enough to make the people clap here at Kansas City. Don't forget, next week the doubleheader. It all starts with the NFL today with the group back in New York. Then you can watch San Francisco against Philadelphia, St. Louis against New Orleans, or Washington against New England in that first game. You check to see what's in your area. And the second one, Chicago, Seattle, or Green Bay against Dallas. Check your local listings. Uh, next week, it's CBS Doubleheader Day. First and 10, in San Francisco was caught by Kavanaugh back to Craig. Craig breaks the tackle and gets over the 40 and the 42. Brown responding. Dave Waymer making a tackle there for the state secondary. Watch John Ayers now, number 68. He'll be the lead blocker. The guard pulling from the left-hand side. Bobby Johnson, a young safety, sees it pretty good, but he's got to come up and take on a 260-pounder. He got buried. He made a big pile right there, but Roger Craig did a good job of stepping over it. Craig was a, a hurdler in, in high school in his first couple years at Nebraska and, and looked like one there going over that pile. Big Ayers really came out and buried him, didn't he? guys are mean that way. First and ten, Kavanaugh's got the 49ers driving. Wendell Tyler makes a veer at the line of scrimmage and pops through to the 47-yard line. And I noticed a little activity downfield as Clark, the big receiver, was down throwing at one of the secondary men. That makes the play pass action a little bit better the next time you run a pass, huh? He's almost like having a, a tight end out there. Dwight Clark at 6'4 and 215 pounds. I don't believe Clark has caught many balls yet today, has he? One pass is off. Kavanaugh, Matt Kavanaugh. Quick draw play. Craig. In, 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 in the New Orleans territory, and it looks like a first down. It's going to bring another cheer up from the sun-baked masses, as they call them. Well, that young guy right there has been dependable for the 49ers since they drafted him in the second round last year. We talked about Wendell Tyler's adjustment. He just made a good adjustment in the backfield that time. 212, 210, somewhere in there. About 222, he'll fool you. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, New Orleans 20, San Francisco 17. We told you we were going to have some kind of a tight ball game. You just had to sit around and wait for it. Remain unbeaten, and the people, 60,000, calling for it. Now let's see if Matt Cavanaugh, the backup quarterback, played for the first time in 1984 can do it. He's got a first down in New Orleans territory at the 47. The play action pass. Kavanaugh Francis in and out of the hands of Russ Francis at the 26 yard line. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York City for an update. 
Brookie, you mentioned what kind of season Phil Sims is having. Well, this is the touchdown pass that put the Giants ahead of the Redskins. Beautifully thrown pass to Bob Johnson. And the Giants could be 3-0. You believe it? Let's go back to Brookie. Boy, I bet Parcells doesn't want to wake anybody up. The Giants are playing. They're going for 3-0 today. Phil Sims has been something since he, uh, he's 100% healthy. For Lancelot. It's second down and 10. Kavanaugh's pass on the money, but not held by Russ Francis. Waymer was right there. Kavanaugh, straight drop back now. He's got time. He's overthrowing Solomon. Johnny Pohl was there. Kavanaugh, of course, is a, he's a good-looking young athlete, a lot like Montana in some ways. I suppose that's why McVeigh and Walsh got him. He's 6'2", 212 pounds in his sixth year. Yeah, they picked him up before the start of, uh, of last season, before the 83 season. He really didn't play much last year because of Montana's durability. Uh, I've seen him play some in the preseason, and, and uh, what you haven't seen yet from him is he's really nifty back in the pocket. What's pressured, uh, he can move around and scramble with the best of them. Extremely quick back there. Clark. And Monroe to the bottom of the screen. That's Monroe. Cutting through the pattern there. Let's see what Kavanaugh goes here. Spikes and knocked down by Jim Wilk. And the good ball game over there, Jimmy Wilkes, the thing you're supposed to do, try to get penetration, and if you can't, get those arms and hands up, and he knocked it down. Wilkes at 6'5", so it's quite a long shadow there. Wilkes was a guy that was almost an afterthought draft choice. They picked him up on the 12th round, and in 81, they were looking at a quarterback from another school. He played for San Diego State, they were looking at a quarterback, and saw him rushing the passer and picked him. Rodiger's punt taken by Fields, and he is taken at the 11-yard line very quickly. A, maybe a return of a couple of yards. Good kicking game that time. The punt was good. The coverage was good. We've got a good game. It's 20 to 17. The Montana came back. It looked like a John Derrick movie of the 50s or something. What was the name of it? Saturday's Hero. Saturday's Hero on Sunday. You're not, it's only too old enough, probably. Around here, anyway, to remember that. It's a collector's item. A Montana back means that he's going to come back in the next ferry. And right now, Snake Stabler, who's been around long enough to be in that movie, is quarterbacking. Drive. Rogers. Not much. And a lot of red on him. A lot of time left. We've got 14 minutes and... 15, 16 seconds, and you kind of get the feeling now that, that this game might be decided by a defensive break, an interception or a fumble somewhere that might make the difference in this one. Well, I think you summed it up when you thought that space defense had stayed in there a lot of time on the field, and they're still able to play as well as they do. Rogers with 79 yards on 19 carries. Stabler, the rush is on, he's down. The lane board. Big sack. Well, with the loss of Fred Dean, board is there. Down in low and then just kept scrambling as he, it looked like they had a stun in where the tackle went outside, board came back inside and they were really kind of gingerly on those knees. Uh, Discretion was the better part of Valor that time. A great hustle play by Wayne Board. Stabler out of the end zone. It's up. Heading for growth, and it's just over his hand. Wayne Hicks was there. Good coverage. Let's go to New York City for an update. Brent? Still Montana in your game, and Vince Ferragamo has been knocked out of the Ram game. So Jeff Kemp now has stepped in. Here he's flushed by the Pittsburgh Steelers on the run. He's got Drew Hill. This will be a 57-yard touchdown, but still the Rams trail the Steelers by 3-17-14. Let's go back to Brookie. Rams are fighting back. This division, the Western Division of the NFC, is going to be down to the wire. Macklemore about to take the punt. Brian Hansen, the young man that replaced Urslaven, is in his end zone. And he oh, a tremendous a punt. Look at this punt. Macklemore takes it at the 38, drops it. And his tackle at the 41. What a punt. 
for it. He is fined from Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. He has a 94 yarder to his credit. And another rookie, Terry Hogue, went down under it and made the tackle. We got some stars on the field. A 56 yard punt. Sternum. That is your chest bone. If you want to know what it is, that it is painful and you can't do a lot of moving around unless you're forced to. He says he might come back. First down call by Kavanaugh. Toss to Wendell Tyler. Tyler hitting very hard for a small running back to the 47-yard line. Whitney Paul got bucked around that time. Yeah, a little guy packs some punch, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's low swung and, and built uh, extremely heavy in the, in the thighs and below the waist, and uh, he can deliver. A pickup of six yards. By Wendell Tyler, the man in a hurry, second down and four. Cavanaugh on play action pass, rolling. That's what I was going to say. That was an excellent catch. Watch this right here now. Play action, fakes the draw. One back out in the flat, he's well covered. Looks for Francis over the middle. Flings it. Now watch this. In the hands, <laughs> down on one knee. You know, I had a feeling when we talked to him yesterday, Wayne, that he sort of wants to be used a little bit. That he wants to not be a party doll. He wants to be a real good football player, which I think he always has been. Sometimes people have taken him for granted. So Outside beer by Craig. Boy, the 49ers are getting after the safe defense now. Good looking buck by the young fullback. Picks up about five yards. There it is with Craig now drive blocking here by Bubba Paris on the left side. John Ayers over there. The tight end Francis. They're doing a good job right now of knocking people off that line of scrimmage. Well, that's New Orleans best. might have to take a chance now, Brookie, and perhaps blitz a little bit. That's See the best block for Paris anyway, straight ahead. Yeah, right it is. All right, second down and four. Give him six on that. Craig. Here come the linebackers in. They did fill the gap. Tyler for the first down. And slithering to get it. They're having to hold Tyler on the ground. Frank Warren. Boy, Quillen's some center, isn't he? He doesn't get much credit. Bum's worried. What I said now, you might see New Orleans go into some blitzing, blitzing and stunning right now to, to make something happen. They're not beating them straight up. Dwight Clark comes out. Mike Wilson, who had the big catch against Washington, and Solomon in. Solomon's had him against anybody that's ever lined up. It's a first down call. Inside trap play by Tyler. He hits the hole and is pinned down by Dirk Winston. Well, they did blitz. They brought the Kovacs, the inside linebacker, and John Ayers picked him off, and Tyler almost popped it. Don't forget, in two weeks on CBS Sports Saturday, Gary Cooney takes on Phil Brown in a 10-round heavyweight bout live from Anchorage, Alaska. Cooney hasn't fought since losing his bid to take the heavyweight title from Larry Holmes in June of 82. Join us all for the action from Alaska in two weeks on CBS Sports Saturday. 68 yards for Wendell Tyler on 15 carries. Second five. Got a roll right. Good job to Cooper. Cooper breaks the tackle. Cooper scores. Cavanaugh to Cooper, and even Bum Phillips is clapping. Well, what he said is, don't worry about it. We'll get the lead back. Cooper, the converted fullback, switched the tight end last year. They made that move because they like to get him the ball out there where he can run with it open, and uh, he showed what he can do. Broke a tackle and scored. Got away from Ricky Jackson. There are not many people alive that have done that in the NFL. Where's he? That's the point. Montana's been hurt. 
9.33 left in the fourth period, and the 49ers finally go back on top. There's Cooper. Here's the Cooper touchdown. You see, yeah, that was him going in motion across the middle. Play action fake. Roll out by Kavanaugh. Number 49 is Watlett. Cooper pulls the leg away from him and then sets sail. Frank Wadlett was up in pretty good shape, but couldn't hang on to Cooper. Takes it in for the score, and we've got a close one. Because most of it's going to be written in the next nine and a half minutes. Where is he going to kick off? A 59-yard drive, six plays, and Kavanaugh, the man that was at the control. And now to Cooper for the score, and Kavanaugh thinks he's been in three of six for 51 yards and that touchdown. Where is he kick off? The crowd now getting into the action. Fields at the three. Getter Fields. Reversing. Oh, hit hard at the 22. Both teams now are loading it up. That's those numbers I just gave you. Six plays, 59 yards. It took three and a half minutes. And Kavanaugh with a daring reverse roll. A 23-yard pass to Earl Cooper. 24-20. And the Saints weren't in this for a quarter and a half until he showed up. Stabler. Whiskey River. Drop back. At Goodlow at the 39. Good throw, though. New Orleans is gesturing as if it's on the 49ers. We remarked earlier that they never threw crossing panels at New Orleans, at passing patterns at New Orleans, and now they look like they're bringing good low across. Defensive holding, automatic first. Bill Walsh with a 2-0 record coming in. During the pass, decline, it's up there. Decline, so they took the pass reception, which was good, to Goodlow from Stabler. Washington, 24-23-14, quickly on top of the Giants now. High formation, Guy John and George Rogers. Stabler being rushed, Sam's in there. Mario Clark cut number 80 off at the pass. That was Lindsey Scott. Fabler is getting up very slowly back in a pocket that disappeared about the time he unloaded. Dwayne Board was standing over him. Mario Clark, a, a physical cornerback who plays a, in a lot like the Ronnie Lott style. Lindsey Scott wanted a call downfield here. The officials didn't give it to him, but there is contact right before the ball gets there. The contact on both players, the official rules. The question always is that does the defensive player have the position first? Stabler trying to get it out of the screen to Wilson. Wilson, there's a flag down at the 50-yard line. Wilson gets to about the 39-yard line. Eric Wright came up and hit the running back very hard. Let's see what to call it. Offensive pushing. That's another one that's hard to detect with everybody doing it. He has been a Ken Stabler, a team leader for this New Orleans team since he came over. Gave them respectability and pass interference. 85 offense. Second now. 85. Brenner, the tight end, clearing out. Bum wants his license number. Come on, Brenner, he says. Get with the game plan. Two good football teams. The Saints were last year, and they were humiliated in this ballpark a year ago, 27 to nothing. They said it was the worst game they played in '83. They're playing a good one today. Dallas on top of Philadelphia by six. Gets it down in 20. Stabler intercepted. Number 49 has it. That's Fuller. Fuller inside the 10 to the five-yard line. from behind 
but Fuller may have changed the whole game. Well, the rookie out of Texas A&M has already made some big plays for the 49ers. Here it is. Take a look secondary-wise. He is 49. He was drafted as a linebacker. The 49ers took a look at him in minicamp, and he ran the 40 so extremely well and covered so well, they moved him to safety. He comes in now and plays in the nickel situation as a linebacker, but they have used him back there at safety. He ran a 4-4-40 for him, and wow. he said he's 6 2 2 and could play linebacker if needed. A 36-yard return of an interception by Fuller, his first, and certainly his biggest. Avanoff, cross-buck handoff. Wendell Tyler inside the five. I looked across the field though, immediately after that, and Bum Phillips was not jumping up and down and mad. He was just clapping his hands like, hang in there. There's a lot of time left in the fourth quarter. He wears well, the man in the ostrich boots. Uh, you know what he, he said to me once, something that really makes sense. He says, you can't sell your people on winning every game because when you lose, <laughs> then you'll doubt yourself. Pretty good philosophy, right? A quality person, look out. 49ers. What this and bad, they lead by four. Kavanaugh. Play action pass, Kavanaugh. Ow, over Solomon's hands. Good coverage out there by 44, Waymer. Dave Waymer, the cornerback on Solomon. Kavanaugh just did have that out of there, though. That's a tough coverage for the secondary men, because if you touch him, they scream. If you don't, your coach is going to kill you. Kavanaugh started out of course with the New England Patriots coming out of Pittsburgh he was the starter for them in that in the strike short year and started the first few games of that season until the strike and then when he came back for no apparent reason they gave the job to Steve Grogan he actually lost his starting job during the strike and that's what kind of soured him on the situation in New England and he has to be moved and they moved him here and the 49ers were glad to get him they had trouble getting a play in the young Kavanaugh and now they have to call a timeout that one may be important he did on the tube, and you got to get these kind of touchdowns. Third down and five. Third and goal, really, from the five after the interception by Fuller. And young Kavanaugh, the number two quarterback replacing Montana, must get this touchdown. They burned a timeout. That's better than having a fumble or something, I guess, White. I think they were having a, a little bit of problem with the, with the signal system on the sideline. Kavanaugh wasn't uh, exactly sure what they wanted, and the, the safe thing to do in such a crucial situation here is just to walk over and get it. You know, with Montana in the ball game here, the 49ers in this situation a lot like to favor, you know, roll out one way or the other and give him an option of run or pass. And, and I would imagine they'd stay pretty much the same with Kavanaugh because, uh, as I said before, he, he, he can move. And he's pretty much along the same line, good feet, good handling the pocket. He might even move. be a little bit faster than Montana. Boy, not bad. Good credentials for young Kavanaugh. Monroe and Roger Craig in there. Clark to the bottom of the screen. Solomon tight to the top. Kavanaugh to throw. Being rushed. And overthrows Craig, who was bear-hugged by Dirt Winston. Well, you know, in a way, if Dirt would have been playing the ball instead of the man, he may have been able... We may have seen about a 90-yard interception return. That's one of his problems. He's always gone for the body, you know? Right here. You'll see it. Kavanaugh back. Normal drop. Blitz by Whitney Paul. And... Look at right there. Whoa. He was trying to do uh, some separating. And if he'd have just been looking at that ball, he may have, may have had a chance. It's tough for a linebacker to do because you don't get in that situation a whole lot of time. Advantage to New Orleans now because this worrying field goal will only make it a seven-point margin. They held off the TD by San Francisco. That's good. But they go up by seven points over New Orleans now, and that's a touchdown and an extra point. Big defensive stand by the New Orleans Saints. We've got 7.45 left. Special team, well, Wersheen has got to get one of his superior kickoffs, get it deep in the end zone so it only comes out to the 20. You don't want to have a special team play give New Orleans an advantage to get that Sabre offense going from about the 40 or better. Fields and Duckett waiting. Good high kick. It's going to be short, though. This is Duckett at the seven-yard line. He's good. He's trying to get over to the wedge. Oh, good tackle. Number 52 very quickly made a good tackle. That's Montgomery, Blanchard Montgomery. 
Duck could have had a little room if he'd have made it over there. There's a 49er on the field on about the seven yard line. He stretched out. Good coverage by the 49er kickoff team. Seven and a half minutes left. Talk about your special teams work. Uh, here's Ron Ferrari, who's one of the good ones. The 49ers keep a lot of linebackers around because they're good on special teams. Oh, my God. Up and at him right there. And uh, that's what happened. Ferrari's the one who helped off. Just stunned, though. Three-car collision, and he's walking <laughs> away from it. <laughs> what a fender bender that was. He's coming out of it. You know, he was a, he was a walk-on at Illinois. He was a running back in high school. Nobody wanted him, and he went to the coach and said, if you just let me run down on some kickoffs, I'll guarantee you I'll, I'll make your team. <laughs> he did. He did. He's playing. And now the big defense in series for San Francisco. Make Sabre the quarterback. He came on in that second period. George Rogers on the toss. Nowhere to go. A lot of red shirts chasing. McCall getting there first. Two guys, two outside linebackers that I know could make that play. Ted Hendricks is one, and Milt McCall is another. They call McCall Bird after Big Bird, and he's about 6'6". Those long arms, and he reached out and made that play. He was a, a normal human being. Rogers is around the corner on that one. Remember earlier when you said they wanted to keep Rogers running parallel with the line of scrimmage? Don't let him get cut back and turned up. He's like a freight train then. Second down, and call it 10 to go. Saber's got to throw it. You know it, we know it. The blitz is on. Saber's pass is broken up. Mario Clark, good coverage. And then it's for Scott. Boy, what coverage. Yeah. But a short out. And it's a very tough one to read as a cornerback because you really give yourself up. Here's Stabler now with plenty of time on this one. They had time to set and throw and get something on it, and it's going to be there for Lindsey Scott. But Mario Clark, number 29, playing over there in place of Ronnie Lott. Mario Makes came a big one. from Buffalo, right, where he started for so many years. This is Dwayne Board. I know it would be bad news for the night. There's anything oh. wrong with him. They've already lost, like I said, a couple defensive ends. But Dover's gone. And he's had two knee operations in the last five years. Fred Dean isn't here. And as McVeigh said, you can't find good defensive ends. They're not around. You know why? He said because they all have bad knees. It's a very vulnerable position. Good point. Boyd is in at defensive end. Just a team from the Green Bay Packers. And third down and 10 call for Snake Savior. Unloads it out. That goes with the ball. He's going to have a first down. Williamson made the tackle, but I think late. Great effort by Gross. He's the under receiver that got him in that Tampa Bay he's contest, he's, too. He's their third down guy. He had six catches in the first two games, and all of them were on third down. See why they like him right here. He runs exquisite patterns, and he's where the quarterback knows he's going to be in those cru crucial situations. And he drives right there for an extra yard or two to pick it up. 6-15. There's Richard Todd, the starter from Alabama in this game. He doesn't look unhappy, though, that Stable has brought him back. Part of football. Good catch by Goodlow and a good tackle at the 35-yard line. Boy, Macklemore. Look about being able to inhale and exhale again. If he misses that tackle, that Goodlow's got very good speed. Don't forget, next week, CBS doubleheader day. The NFL today starts it all back in New York with Brent and Jimmy and Phyllis. Irv, and then it's for 49ers in Philadelphia, St. Louis to New Orleans, Washington at New England. And then that second game follows that. Here's George Rogers running left to the 40 for another first down. Five and a half minutes. Fox running now. And that second game, in case you're worried about that right now, Chicago against Seattle and Green Bay against Dallas. You think that, uh, that Franco will be pretty well settled into the Seattle offensive system by that time, and it might be a shootout between him and Peyton that day. Well, he better be, because that Chicago defense <laughs> is the craziest bunch of people I've ever won. They line up everywhere, don't they? They almost ran the Denver Broncos out of, out of town. They drove them to O'Hare during the game. Chris Ward, the big tackle that used to be with the Jets, the number one draft out of Ohio State that Bum Phillips got at the last minute when LaFerry went there. Yeah, LaFerry perhaps... Uh, 
their steadiest offensive linemen have basically not their best. Of course, Chris Ward big, too. They, he's got to get up on his own because those three cannot get him up. Well, they got him listed at 269. <laughs> you know. Junior in high school, he weighs <laughs> yeah. 260. Yeah, he's another one of those guys where you got to take him down to the, to the, the freight station to, to weigh him. What a game. 17 zip. San Francisco just controlled the entire first quarter. You know what happens, boy. They come off the bench and get it warmed up. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, the new show, Emergency Room. This is the premiere, by the way, of 60 Minutes. The new ones are out. Of course, that's always everybody's favorite. A great show. Emergency Room follows that. And then Some Kind of Hero follows that. CBS tonight, right here. There's Chris Ward going off. Chris Ward. Dallas in the fourth period, comfortably in front of Philadelphia now. Detroit, 17-14. That might not be enough in the fourth period there. Ronnie Clark's not going to have any nails left. <laughs> Pittsburgh by 10 over the Rams. And Ferragamo is having his finger looked at. First and 10 now with five minutes left. The toss, the reverse fake by Rogers. Rogers cuts back and bulls his way to the 46-yard line. The fake reverse to Gross. Saber Rogers. now trying to stretch that defense again. And just mixing it up a little bit. Get him thinking about things. Here it is right here. There's the toss to Rogers. Watch Jeff Gross come around. They fake the handoff to him, but those guards that pulled up front keep blocking, and the business is all being taken care of right here. This got word on Dwayne Board. He was picked in the camp, and can and most likely will come back. Second down and a long four or five. Gross in motion through the formation. Toss back to George Rogers running sideways. They kept him going there and trapping for a loss. 49er defense. I think it was Board. <laughs> I do. I think it was number 76 over there that made the original hit. <laughs> yep. The good ones do want to play, don't they? Yeah, they get back fast, don't they? Here it is right here. The toss and watch Board who limps off just a few moments ago. Handle this one. Handle his man floated on out. Makes the hit. And put the stoppers to it. Along with Jim Fonhorst, the linebacker, 55. Now if Stabler and Phillips have been saving a play, it comes out now on third down and five. And you saw the clock, 343 left. What a, let's see if there's a flag. No flag. Eric Wright. Eric Wright back in the game at the corner. Made a classy play. They say he's one of the best coverage men in the league. That proved it. Ronnie Watt said his, his goal in life is to be able to cover one-on-one -on -one like Eric Wright. You'll see why right here. Back in the game because of the... Uh, I, I suppose oh. the time of the game it is, but Brittany, you play that position out there and you That's don't do it any better than that. He reached around and knocked it away. They wouldn't even call a foul in the NBA on that one. Perfect timing. He is some smooth player. Yes, he is. Ronnie Lott has been out now. You see Snake Saber over on the sideline. The bearded one. What did he bring this team up by the bootstraps, huh? Really did. I, you know, you just kind of wonder here, you know, with 338 and with the kind of with the way that kid Hanson is kicking, I, you know, this is a tough decision for Bunk Phillips right here to, to keep the offense on the field. The defense has been playing pretty good until, you know, the last series or so. And there's plenty of time if, if they could drill it deep and they get the ball back perhaps in good field position. But I think what he's thinking right now is that he has enough confidence in number 16 right there. And he told, he told me last year, he says, I love close games because I feel when I get in a close game, I've got the best quarterback. What's he got, an umbrella, umbrella above him there? No, that's the standard, <laughs> that's I guess. The standard, yeah. He's not that cool, calm and collected. I don't think he brought his own umbrella at this point. You know, I think I'd put it down in the corner and, and try to use three minutes to get the ball back. It, it's, you know? yeah, it's a tough decision. It really is. I mean, if they don't pick it up here now, it's, you know, it's just almost all over for him. Well, you're right, though. He's got a left-hander in there. If I had to have somebody with with the dice in their hand for one shot on the hard eight, I believe I'd hand him to Stabler. That's right. That's yeah. exactly the way Phillips saw. That's the way Bump feels about it. Niners got their nickel in there. Their best, their best pass defender. Eric Wright's in there. Mario Clark at the corner. Wilson's in there. He's the back behind Stabler. He's got time. Now it breaks loose. 
Bruce Wilson that can't hang on to the ball. 49ers will take over at the 45. I don't see any flag. Jeff Fuller making another big play on Wayne Wilson. Yeah, and there was some pretty good pressure on Stabler back there. I believe Dwayne Board was back there. Tui Asisopo putting a little heat on him, and he, he did throw it a little bit behind Wilson. Jeff Fuller was right there. Take a look at it here. 49ers Fuller is up there faking the blitz. Watch him checking for that back to come out on him now. Here he comes, so he'll pick him up coming over the middle. Look at the pressure back there. Stabler had to throw it off his back foot. And it was catchable. It was down on the knee, but Fuller was right there with him. And it was Board that flushed the early throw out. Yeah. Good, good call. Good analysis, John Wayne. Some football game. First down. Kavanaugh's got to keep it now for three and a half minutes. Cross back handoff. That's Craig. He's got the speed. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And he's just faster than he looks, isn't he, Berkey? You know, he bounces yep. out, and it doesn't look like he's getting much, and then all of a sudden he's got eight yards, and he's around people. I think he held a 220-meter state high school record in Nebraska, I believe. You know, I mean, he yeah. really is a true spreader. I told you that he was a hurdler. He was a hurdler in high school and college. And, you know, and his hero, naturally, was uh, Ronaldo Nehemiah. So. Sure. so the 49ers had an inside shot at him. Second yeah. down and three. 326 left. The clock seems stopped by Craig getting out of bounds. Tyler's in there now. And Kavanaugh has replaced Montana, who has large first down. Now the clock is running, and you know that the 49ers are not going to stop it. Bum's going to have to do that somehow. Yeah, you know when uh, Roger Craig ran out of bounds on that first toss on first down when he got back to the huddle, uh, I'm quite sure that the veterans in the huddle said, kid, take, an, take one yard less, just stay in bounds and keep that clock running. <laughs> you can see Bum Phillips. Roger Craig and Tyler in there. Kavanaugh. Tyler tends to try to get away at the 30. You never have him quite put away, do you? Waymer finally came up and cinched it. He's always sort of skittering, you know? You just think you have him and you don't. Like Mercury. You ever try to pick up Mercury and then you used to drop Mercury <laughs> down? And just to bum around and skid all over? That's the way he runs. He's been averaging 90 some odd yards a game rushing. And you know he's a good pass receiver. All those number of fumbles down and hello Pro Bowl. Now those fumbles, they, you know, they basically come when he's squirming for extra effort and, and things like that. And they've talked to him about it, and he's concentrating more in those situations like right now, this kind of situation where, you know, the extra yard or two doesn't mean as much as the possession of the ball. Roger Craig, eight carries for 52 yards. Tyler, 17 carries for 70 yards. And that's why a lot of people think that this is uh, the best 49er team, even better than the Super Bowl year, because they have a lot better running game. Of course, the thing that we're seeing as we watch Kovacs for defense and Bum Phillips talk is that this division, uh, if the Rams lose Ferragamo, Atlanta now has lost sort of a surprising one to the Vikings. Uh, uh, these two teams, when they do meet again down in New Orleans, is probably the division. You know? Yeah, no telling. It's uh, a, a two-game lead now, you know, for the 49ers. Could they, could they win this one? And uh, pretty good early in the year looking back. And going into Philadelphia, not a great place to visit. Good place to live, but not a great place to visit. But, the, you know, the Eagles right now are probably not in the top ten team as far as uh, the difficulty. There you can see what happened so far. We're not through here. 2.22 left. Toss. Craig. 35. Whitney Paul came up very quickly. Colorado, buddy. And New Orleans just took a timeout, Tom. They want to get the clock stopped here once before the two-minute mark because they know the two-minute mark will stop it again for them. That way they'll have two timeouts left if and when they get the ball back to do some finagling. I am so impressed uh, with the Saints team today because they are spirited. I mean, really up particularly when Snake Saber came in. They just seemed to... We watched tapes of them playing Tampa Bay, and uh, I thought they were very listless until the last minute, until Hokie Gaijan got them going. But he takes wins and losses pretty much in the same frame of mind. He knows it's a long year as you go through a 16-game season. You know, everybody has high spots, low spots, and, and, uh, and level off. 
Look at that, Tampa Bay coming back uh, over my line, 21-17. Can't count anybody out. Pittsburgh, 24-14 in the fourth quarter. That was just about over. Washington getting even with the world today, I suppose. You know what it's like being a loser in that city these days? Yeah, they forget your past, don't they? Oh, they forget the politicians for today. The They'll really rip you up. All right, Tom Brookshire and Wayne Walker. Watching what's really been a... young fuller who comes in on the nickel defense in three games so far this year he's made two or three plays that might determine whether this club goes to work in late january or not a real find uh, that no question that uh, they were when they first came to minicamp uh, with him and all the other draft choices he he was uh, a number six draft choice i believe and, uh, and they said lord you know he looked like they, they could have spent a number two on him and been happy New Orleans is now out of timeout. San Francisco still has a couple. Crowd now begin to play ukuleles and get into a post-game party atmosphere, but it's not over yet. Inside handoff, middle time. Close to 10 yards on that one burst. Wendell Tyler running close to that flat block. Oh, he gets right in with the guards and tackles. Ricky Jackson shoestringing from behind. Uh-oh, Wendell gets up limping. Good time to take a curtain call. Almost picks up the first down. Here's Tyler's run. Lead block there by Craig, and looks like a short trap up front. Like you said, he stays down there so low, and it's hard for the defense to pick him up. Good, tough running. Keep in mind that should the San Francisco team stay on top here, that the Los Angeles Raiders won over Kansas City 22-20. And the Super Bowl is only a few miles down the road, isn't it? That would be wild indeed. Palo Alto would come apart as a team. With the 49ers and Raiders. Some people yeah. might think. Where's the fault line, right? <laughs> Bob Phillips' team has put their head back and played very well. And a fourth down, big play right here for New Orleans on, on defense. Biggest of the day. Where's he now? He's going to try that field goal from the 30. So this is a 40-yard field goal attempt. Fourth and two, so highly short. High snap. He still got it through. Way Where's he? Kicked the one that he had to kick. A high snap to Kavanaugh, the new holder. Ray stayed in there. I, that makes a difference, too, having uh, having someone in there. It doesn't get a lot of work with Kavanaugh in practice because the Montana is his holder. But Kavanaugh handled that extremely well. New Orleans defense tried to make the big thirds, and they had been close to a couple of them today. In fact, got their hands on one, but 49ers buckled up that time, and nobody got any penetration at all. Don't forget, CBS is our doubleheader day. It all starts with Fred and Irv and Phyllis and Jimmy back in New York, and then it's the 49ers against the Eagles. We hope you'll join Wayne Walker and I on that one. Or St. Louis against New Orleans, or the Redskins taking a nice little trip to New England. The second game of that doubleheader, the Chicago Bars, that's what they call them there, against the Seattle Seahawks. And Green Bay takes a trip to Dallas. Check your local listings, but it's Doubleheader day on CBS, and we're beginning to get some trends going. And the good teams have at least 49 good players. That's the biggest trend I see so far. There are no shortcuts any longer. Duckett and Fields waiting for Wershing's kickoff. Boy, Ray must be happy after that. Move. That's Duckett. He keeps going to the left side, trying to get sprung over there, and they keep closing it off for him. He's got there at about the 19th. Montgomery making another one. Blanchard Montgomery. Now let's see if Saber. I've never known him to throw the real deep, deep ball when you expect it. Now he has to almost. 150 on the clock. No timeout. 
in a situation like this, a quarterback uh, is really limited. If he, he really kind of has to throw the ball towards the sideline, down so they can get out of bounds and stop the clock. John Anthony is in there with him. That's intercepted by number 90, Todd Shell. Todd Shell, the BYU rookie. What a play. I don't even know if Saber saw him. Shell was the Niners' first draft choice. So it's almost in the bank here right now for the 49ers. They're at least in the deposit line. <laughs> Right here, Shell dropping back. Number 90 you see. He's playing a real loose zone. Everyone is. A little pressure again. And it was not a good throw as he was going for Junior Miller. The ex-Atlanta tight end. Amazing pressure with only a three-man rush. They dropped everybody off that time. Might have fooled Snake in the thinking he had some kind of blitzing pressure. A 14-yard return by Todd Shell, who is fast, and he's going to fill out one of these days. Ivy League fella. He was Ivy League Player of the Year last year for Cornell. Smart football team. You hate this on defense now, Brookie, when you've really been there and you've really put out what you have. It's all everything you had out there today is down on that field, and you've given it about all. And you look over there, and it's pretty hopeless right now, and the other team's got new guys in there that want to gain a few yards. And, you know, I found out that people always remember the last play of the game, and if you were burned on it, that's, that's all they ever yeah. remember is how bad you played. They have played well. Second down and five. They played great. Kavanaugh getting some neat experience. Bill Friel tells me that Derek Harmon, the Cornell again. It is. I'm glad that you mentioned the fact that, that the New Orleans defense uh, has played well, Tom, because uh, I mentioned at the end of the first half that the score could have been in 28 San Francisco points or 31 San Francisco points, and they, they kept their team in there until somebody came to help them, and the guy happened to be Stabler. They got back in the ball game, but didn't have quite enough to get past it. Uh -huh. Just saw a little smile on Joe Montana's face, so he must not be in awful pain and probably very happy that Kavanaugh is so capable for him. Huh? No question. Walsh had a smile. A worried smile. Third down about a foot. The game is over. And not many seconds left, as you can see, and might not even get a snap off. Good football game. Francisco 30, New Orleans 20, Tom looks drive for Wayne Walker. Let's go now to Tampa Bay, Detroit. Good job, Tom. Tom. Okay. Tom, that's a good one. 